Nebraska Public Media Sports, Nebraska's home for championship sports. And we are live at Memorial Stadium to begin our two-day coverage of the NSAA State Football Championships. And we begin in Class D2. It's number one versus number two, a couple of undefeated teams as Howells Dodge takes on Hitchcock County. And hello again, everyone. I'm Larry Putney, along with Matt Verzal. Great to have you with us from here at Memorial Stadium for two days of championship football. We kick it off in Class D2. Verz, it's, it's not often we see two teams that both have rushers who rush for almost 2,200 yards. It, it is amazing to see as an offensive lineman, it warms the cockles of my heart to see <laughs> coaches commit to just running the football. Fantastic, fantastic opportunity to see some great running backs today. Keenan Gaston started off here. For, for the Hitchcock County team. Um, really, really deceptive kid, elusive. He, he does everything you need in the running back position or a quarterback position, but you have to do that at this level of football. Everybody's going to play a lot. Very, very valuable piece to the Hitchcock County team. Yeah, 2,200 yards on the ground. You might think he's a running back, right? He's actually yeah. running the show for quarterback. <laughs> Let's talk about Howell's Dodge. This is a program that has been here many times before. They've got an outstanding running back in Lance Prester, 2,215 yards. And he is, is as advertised. I asked Coach uh, Spears when I was up there watching practice. He said, does he have any desire to go play after this? Because he's really good, really talented kid. He said, no, he's going to go run the, run the yard with his dad when he gets done. I said, you may want to reconsider. He's a hell of a running back. 47 touchdowns on the year. Do you guys score that many your senior year? Uh, we are actually really good, but I don't think we got that number. I don't think we got there. <laughs> He's had 47 touchdowns. Third member of our crew is Doug Duda. He's down to the field. Let's go down to Doug. Hey, good morning, guys. You've covered a lot of what we're going to see in this football game today. In fact, run, run, run. How have they done in the passing game this year? These two teams have thrown a total of 55 passes from their starting quarterbacks over the year. How will special teams come into play here today? Both teams probably won't score every time they touch the ball. These teams together have 13 total punts on the year. How will the punter? In fact, Hitchcock County doesn't even list a starting punter on the roster for today's football game. So the small things that maybe these teams haven't done before, special teams, punt the ball, maybe throw the ball, could help determine a football game between two teams that love to run the ball. Thank you very much, Doug. Well, here is a look at what is coming your way over the next two days on Nebraska Public Media Sports. We begin this morning in T2, Hitchcock County, Howells Dodge, both undefeated, one versus two. This afternoon, Clarkson Lee and Neely Oakdale in the D1 championship, and then we'll wrap up day one tonight with a rematch of last year's Class A state championship, Gretna and Omaha Westside. They say all the bad blood is gone. Not sure I believe it, but we'll see tonight in Class A. Then tomorrow morning in Class C2 at 10 a.m. It, it's uh, Cedar Catholic and Orfor Catholic. That's a rematch of the state volleyball championship. Same two teams back here in C2. Then in C1 tomorrow afternoon, Pierce and Aurora. Aurora dropping down a class this year. Pierce was here last year in the state championship game. That should be terrific. And then Bennington looks uh, for another one in Class B as Gross and Bennington battle. It's going to be a good couple of days. It is. It's a great day to have a great day. And we're going to crown some champions. We're going to crown three of them, D2, D1, and A. It, it will be a fun day. The, all the culmination, the hard work the gentlemen have put in for the year coming to fruition on this day. Well, let's take a look at uh, Hitchcock County and their schedule. You see undefeated. There were those two disappointing forfeits. I think they talked about that a lot. You know, you take games off the schedule. Never great for football players and for seniors, but they did finish the year undefeated and ranked and seeded number two. It, it is. It, it's tough. We, we had to deal with a forfeit this year at Scott. It's a weird week. You you get extra practice and you're not quite sure what to do. Do we, yeah. do we scrimmage? Do we, what do we do here? But you take yeah. a couple days off, let the boys rest. And it, it's awesome to finish that year 12. We know it's a, it's a really tough thing to do. And congratulations to Hitchcock County for that. It's a great season for the Falcons. And it concludes here at Memorial Stadium. Same for Howells Dodge. They are Defending state champs moved down to class this year, down to class D2. Of course, Mike Spears has been in this situation so many times before, previously with Howells and now with Howells Dodge back-to-back -back years. They also went undefeated, had that one forfeit on the schedule as well. Yeah, it is. Coach, coach has, has definitely coached with his time in Kansas and with his time in Howells. I mean, you're 500 plus games, you got an 80% winning percentage. This is almost the expectation for Howells Dodge right now, a talented team to be able to handle their season and, and also arrive 12-0 with a chance to win another championship. 
Well, the good news is it doesn't matter where you're at. You can find these Nebraska State Championships if you have friends, family across the state, the country, or even the world. They can watch the NSAA High School Championships on Nebraska Public Media Sports by downloading the free Nebraska Public Media app. You can watch your favorite Nebraska high school team or special player live streaming, also supported through Apple TV and Chromecast as well. You can get the free app at nebraskapublicmedia.org slash apps. Time now to get things started. Let's go to our public address announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Memorial Stadium and the 2022 Nebraska School Activities Association Football Championship Finals. For today's Class D2 contest between the Hitchcock County Falcons and the Howells Dodge Jaguars. The NSAA is proud to recognize our premier corporate partners, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, the Nebraska Chiropractic Physicians Association, and Nebraska Orthopedic Center for their outstanding support of NSAA activities. And now for the introduction of the players and coaches. First, for the Hitchcock County Falcons. Number four, Drew Scott. Number nine, Keenan Gaston. Number 13, Mason Schilke. Number 20, Colin Gaston. Number 27, Egan Schuler. Number 31, Brent Kisker. Number 66, Taylor Hubble. Number 82, Tanner O'Brien. The head coach for the Falcons is Randall Rath. And now for the rest of the Hitchcock County players and coaches. So here come the Falcons at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. Class D2 state championship on the line. First ever trip for Hitchcock County and the Falcons here at Memorial Stadium. Let's take a look at uh, some of the numbers this year for Hitchcock County. Purple people eaters, they are 12 and 0. You see their total yards per game and points per game, nearly 60. It's a very diverse, diverse offense that also Plays pretty well on the other side of the ball as well, averaging just 5.2 points per game to their opponents. And Gaston has been the star. He definitely has it, and he he can play the game. He, he's, a, he's a great leader of this organization. Let's go back to Heath Kramer for the introduction of the Jaguars. Now, for the Howells Dodge Jaguars. Number one, Lane Pelina. Number three, Lance Prester. Number four, Aiden Meyer. Number six, Britton Sindelar. Number seven, Colton Clausen. Number eight, Kellen Fiala. Number 10, Rylan Nelson. Number 15, Landon Dobbins. Number 21, Caleb Perrin. Number 24, Oscar Dominguez. Number 25, Dylan Rikache. Number 28, Justin Bayer. Number 55, Connor Krekemeyer. Number 64, Nathan Hegeman. Number 74, Paul Grovajan. Number 93, Andy Dominguez. The head coach for the Jaguars is Mike Spears. And now, the rest of the Howells Dodge players and coaches. 
Yeah, you just always get a feeling when you're down there in the field with the Jaguars and Howells and Mike Spears. This, this isn't just a game for those, for those boys. This is, it, this it, is life. It, it, it is not. You can see the look in their eye when they were taking the field. They are, they are ready to roll. 12-0 on the year are the Jaguars. It has been an impressive season both offensively and defensively as they average 54.4 a game. And defensively, they hold their opponents to just under 11. They fly around. They have a lot of attention to detail. Leverage is a big focus of everything they do in practice. Well, let's take a look at these two teams and where they come from. About five and a half hours separate these two schools. Howells Dodge is in Howells, Nebraska, right in the corner of South Fifth and May Street, the Owl Cafe, the still. You probably stopped at the still when you were up there, didn't you? I didn't have a chance it, to make the it, Mitchell, who's one of their student managers, the mayor, yeah. the mayor of House, yeah. told me I need to go get a burger there. <laughs> but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't right? have time. I had to get back to work. Oh, that's great. And then Southwest Nebraska, about 60 minutes from the Colorado border in Trenton, Nebraska. That's where Hitchcock County is. What if Frank's Pool Hall is still open in town Ooh. there? Yeah? Good call. Yeah. Look at you go. I love Frank's Pool. Hey, Howell's Dodge in Hitchcock County. This is how they got here. Wins over Dundee County, Central Valley, and Hitchcock knocked off Elm Creek in Bloomfield. Let's go back to Heath Kramer. On behalf of the Nebraska School Activities Association and its member schools, welcome to the 2022 NSAA State Football Championship Finals. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask if you are able to please rise and remove your hats to honor America as the Lincoln Southwest High School Octet, under the direction of Marcy D'Ambrose, sings our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so Stripes and bright stars through the perilous night. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still. Outstanding job by the Lincoln Southwest Octet. Our national anthem, and we're ready to go here at Memorial Stadium, the Class D2 State Championship. On the line, two and a half hours, somebody will hoist the trophy as state champs in Class D2. What do you think about going to college? I'm kind of scared. I feel nervous a little bit. That's kind of a tough one. I'm not really sure yet. I'm excited for college. <laughs> How are you going to pay for it? To be honest, I don't really know. That's actually a really good question. <laughs> um, so what if you had a friend you could ask? This is a growing corn plant. It's not battery powered. It doesn't have a 300 mile range, but it's vital in our fight against climate change. Reducing 46% of carbon emissions and producing clean burning ethanol. Corn ethanol is the climate solution we need now. Electricity. It makes life easier, more productive, brighter, possible. Yet we only think about it when we don't have it. The next time you're doing, well, anything, 
Think about how electricity makes it all possible. And know we will be there, powering your every day, every day. Mow, dig, haul, trench. They all get done with the Kubota BX Series subcompact tractor. Attachments designed to keep you moving. The Kubota BX Series with hydrostatic transmission. For more information and participating Nebraska Kubota dealers, KubotaNESports.com. State championships on the line for the Capital City. Number two, Hitchcock County. Number one, Howells Dodge. It's from outside, and now we're back inside here at Memorial Stadium, ready to go in Class D2. 37 degrees. Oh, terrific day, right? Sunny. Feels like 33, but that wind is doing nothing, so what a great day. It's going to warm up throughout the morning. Here's a look at our officiating crew. Ron Golka is our referee, and the rest of the Golka crew. Rick Stromer once again back as our, how long has Rick Stromer been a red hat for us? Wow. All right, here we go, ready to get it away. Toss was won by Howells Dodge, and as you might expect, they want the football. Reminder in class D2. It is an 80 yard field as that goes into the end zone and through. Revolutionary, you don't see that much these days. Straight no. on steel tower. That's right. Put that baby in the end. And zone. ripped it. That's right. <laughs> so, Britton Sindelar is the quarterback for Howells Dodge, 5'9 junior. And behind him is the running back, Lance Brester. Brester, as we said, has rushed for 2,200 yards this season. 47 total touchdowns, a familiar eye formation for Mike Spears, and a familiar toss right to get it going. And Lance Brester with the gain of about two or three. Check that three or four. Really nice play here by the, the outside linebacker defensive end to start the game. Number 31, Trent Kister. Kisker did a good job there getting off the block, making the tackle. You see the impact players for the Jaguars, Justin Bayer, Lane Bellino. Bayer is the fullback here in the formation. Once again in the eye. Toss again. Leans forward, but not much there. Nice job defensively. And another nice play by Keenan Gaston. Interesting start here by Hitchcock County. Why? They're not going to give him the outside where he wants to get. He can use his speed, he can use his elusiveness to, to get a big play. Hitchcock's got him where they want him here, behind the yeah. sticks, third and long, forcing him to throw the ball. So on third down and seven. Got back to throw, tried to screen, in some trouble, and sacked! Brought down by big number 44, 66, Taylor Hubble with the sack. Couldn't have a better start for Hitchcock County. Diagnosis screen. Did have a receiver running open down the field, but unable to get the ball to him. What a big play by Hubble. Six foot 272 junior. That's the perfect male specimen right there. Perfect yeah. build. <laughs> Coming from a guy that used to be six foot one, 300. So Howells Dodge has punted the ball only eight times all year. And this one out of their own end zone. Hunter Luther. Hunter Luther under pressure. And they will take over in their own territory at the 31 yard line. I think That's Kisker got a piece of that. I have got, yep. Kisker got a piece of that. White hat waved it as a tip. So we'll see the Falcons first turn on offense when we come back here at Memorial Stadium. Big play early on by Taylor Hubble. Constellation is a natural gas supplier helping inspire young Nebraskans through hands-on learning. 
Constellation has given more than $320,000 to 4-H and FFA organizations across the state, helping support youth in your community with opportunities to achieve real-world success. Because we believe that powering communities means empowering our future leaders. With Constellation, a contribution to 4-H and FFA is in the stars. All right, it's time to talk about us. Not him, not her, not them. Us. Thanks to us, things have been great. In fact, you can find us just about everywhere. Your food, that's us. Your food's food, that's us too. Your fuel, that's us. And should anyone out there happen to doubt us, by all means, just watch us. So after the 25-yard punt, the Falcons will take over with great field position here on their first drive from the 31-yard line. Kip on the right side. And there is Keenan Gaston on the keeper. Great gain, first down by Gaston. Nice little veer read here. Looked at the defensive end. He crashed down on the fullback, decided to keep the ball. Nice game. Turned almost into a little lead. Yeah. Running back got out ahead, got a nice little kick out block there. Good start for Hitchcock County. Gaston, 27 touchdowns on the year. Over 2,000 total yards. This time gives to the fullback. Leans forward down to the 10. Nice gain on first down of about five yards. Brings up second down, and we'll call it five. Little discipline check here by Hitchcock County. If you want to think Keenan's going to be the guy running, we'll just slide it right underneath to the fullback. So putting that end in a no win situation. You see Colin Gaston's numbers just shy of a thousand of the season. They'll follow Scott into the hole, but nice job there defensively for Howells Dodge. Not much room, thanks to the nice play by Aiden Meyer. Andy Dominguez yeah, he, up he, front as well. Yeah. He's going to be he's going to be a problem today. Hitchcock County will have their hands full handling Mr. Dominguez. A little quick swim move oh, right around yeah. the corner. Yep, that got the agility to get back <laughs> and tackle. He was impressive in practice. He, he's a guy you will watch today. 93 will make some plays. 6-1, 205 as Dominguez brings up third down, third and six. Here's Gaston again, and not much there for Gaston. And once again, the bottom of that pile is Dominguez. Going to be tough sledding up the middle. Hitchcock County's probably going to have to look to get to the outside of it. Just a good play here, hands on. Defeat the block there. Good solid tackle. play. So neither of these teams have attempted a field goal all season long, so wouldn't expect one here. So on fourth down, an opportunity here for the Jaguars to get out of a big jam on the first possession for Hitchcock County. Fourth down. And a timeout taken by Keenan Gaston. Smart play there, got up underneath center, tried to get tried to get uh, House Dodge to be a little bit undisciplined, get him to jump offside, a couple timeout barks, and call the timeout. Well, last year in Class D2, two different teams. Let's take a look back. Class D2 football saw Kennesaw square off against Sand Hills Thedford for the 2021 state championship game. It was a back and forth affair with two high scoring offenses Kennesaw's Tyson Dankert carried the ball 55 times in the game for a grand total of 303 yards rushing and six touchdowns. Sand Hills Thedford at one point scored 32 unanswered points, but it was not enough as the Blue Devils scored their final touchdown on a nearly seven minute drive to take the lead. Kennesaw won the state title with a final score of 46 to 40. Howells Dodge again drops down a class this year. They were in D1 last year. And there is their tournament history, 11th appearance. Second in the finals as a combined school of Howells and Dodge. Of course, Howells and Dodge separately in the 90s and 2000s were here seemingly every year. Fourth down, back to throw. Will pull it down himself. 
leans forward, and he'll be stopped short down to the four-yard line. And so the Howells Dodge Jaguars hold. Well, that oh, they did get the first. Yeah, he he did. He fell forward on that, uh -huh. and that one right there is tough. You're gonna watch this. Everything's good in the coverage. Everything is going well for Howells Dodge. It breaks down there and just lose a little bit of contain on the outside there. Unfortunately, unable to get there soon enough to make the tackle. Give up the middle. Not much there on the carry for Colin Gaston. Nice stick here by Lane Brester. Just reads this. If you want to give this to the fullback, I'm ready to collision this. So second down and gold ball now at the three yard line. Give to Scott, leans forward near the goal line, reaches for it. No signal yet, and he's going to come up just short. It's going to be third down and about one after the carry by Drew Scott. Still two down territory. That the, the best position on this Hitchcock County team might be the kicker because you're not really going to be in there <laughs> influencing much. But down to the one yard line. Watch the intricacies of the game. You see the, the, the variance of splits. If you watch the line, they're going to split out a little bit wider and try to widen howls out. Give. No, he keeps it himself, and Gaston leans forward and into the end zone. Touchdown for the Falcons. Good read by Keenan Gaston, who takes it in for his 28th rushing touchdown of the year. When you're able to establish that, just a little QB follow, just fake the ball to your brother, don't give it to him, and then you go in and score the touchdown. A 31 yard touchdown drive for the Falcons, and now they'll go for two. Scott in the backfield. Little toss out. Tipped up in the air, but pulled back in by Trent Kisker. And Kisker for the two point conversion. Kisker's having a great start to the game for Kisker. Brester reads this thing from the start, jumps throughout, and unfortunately unable to make the catch. So a great start of the first drive by Hitchcock County. And here's another look at the touchdown. Kepin himself follows his brother into the end zone. Boom. Yeah, had it in his hands and he knew it. I don't think you could have scripted any better start here for Hitchcock County. This, this would be an ideal start for them to get a stop, go down and score. There is the drive eight plays. They went 31 yards on the short field. And the one yard touchdown run by Gaston. The thing with these big games, adrenaline will get you through the first five minutes. Get you through the first five minutes of the first half, first five of the second half. Now can you maintain what you've done to start this game? It will be interesting to see. We'll definitely be watching that. So call it Gaston to kick it away. And it'll be out of bounds. There's a look at head coach Randall Rath, fifth season at Hitchcock County. He comes from Kansas. Free kick infraction. The ball will be placed at 25. So the Jaguars will have it at the 25 and take over there. Let's see if they can get something going yet. Have yet to pick up a first down. First ever appearance in the title game for Hitchcock County. There's a keep by the quarterback, Britton Sindelar. And Sindelar picks his way for about four yards on first down. The other runners in this game are going to have to help Howells dodge out. Quarterback, of course, fullback Justin Beyer is going to have to help as well. Take not pressure off of, of Brester, but but give Hitchcock County something else to look at it as this game continues on. That's 
Second down and six. Sindelar back under center. They'll give it to Brester. Finds room, leans forward out past the 35 for a first down for Lance Brester. Great adjustment here by Coach Spears. If you want to widen your defensive tackles out, you want to play that to control the edge, that inside is, is available now. You see Meyer, or you see Justin Byer get up there just on a good lead isolation block, get, getting good yards on the play. There's one thing we have seen out of Mike Spears over the years is great in-game adjustments. He yep. understands what they're trying to do defensively and has multiple options to counter it. He does. Great play in the backfield. And that went nowhere. The Falcons up front play made by Keegan Schuler on really, the stop. Really nice read here by Schuler. Howells Dodge pulls a guard around the corner trying to get another blocker on the, on that side of the play. He just diagnosed that really well, shot the gap, made the play. Good job there by Schuler. Mike Linebacker, 137 tackles coming into the state championship game. You see his numbers, 16 quarterback sacks to lead the team. Second down and 10. And a counter action there. Slips one tackle on another. Comes to the near side. There's Lance Brester. Brester breaks another tackle. Slips another down to the 20 yard line. Still on his feet. Look at Brester inside the 15 yard line. What an impressive run there by Brester. Just giving all kinds of effort on this. Howells Dodge pulls a tackle in their tight end. Try to get more blockers into the left side. Brester didn't like what it was. I believe Schuler's in there again. Just about had that tackle and able to make it, but then just pure effort by Brester to get up the field. Stiff arms, twists, turns. Love the effort from the young man. 31-yard gain of the run for Lance Brester. Keep by Sindelar. Ducks it right underneath, finds... It follows Cole Grovajohn right into the line. Good block by Grovajohn, his center. The coaching world, those are just keep you honest plays. You got to know that the quarterback is a threat to run the ball. Any positive yards out of that is a good thing for Howells Dodge. They're popping down there too, man. We got bad. We got <laughs> right. bats popping. That's <laughs> stuff. Early in the morning, wake up calls. Gain of three on the run by Sindelar. That'll bring up second down. Fire in motion. Counter action. Leads forward. A gain of maybe one or two on the carry by Lance Brester. Good hustle back there. I believe it was Tanner O'Brien. Number 82, you saw the two pullers come again to the right side of the formation this time. Tracked it down, followed it right to the running backs. Good play by that young man. Ball right at the 10 yard line. Third down and six. After picking his way. Leans forward and has enough for a first down, a first and goal on the carry by Brester. Yeah, we got a little mix up there in the middle too, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love the passion, love the enthusiasm. Keep her, keep her under wraps though, boys. No penalties, no silly penalties in this game. Just a little toss. Um, love to see referee or umpire took one there. Sorry about that. Um, quarterback will lead on that. Get the ball to Brester, becomes a blocker. Getting up there, at least getting in the way. 10, 15 years, that'll be a crushing block. Look at that, pops right back up, ready to go. Oh, yeah. First and goal. Brester motions out. Byer gets it, leans forward. Second down and goal. Great. Another little keep you honest play. Motion Brester out of the backfield. Defense makes adjustments, finds a nice, a nice hole up there in the middle. Just nothing fancy. QB takes one step back, releases up the field. Sindelar back under center. It's going to back up the Jaguars five yards. As a former center, that's offside on everybody else. Yeah, of you, course it you is. You can't be offside at the center position. That's right. 
Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Unfortunately, a little hesitation there from Grover John. Just, just wasn't able to get the snap one time. So it goes from second and one to second down and six. Goal to go here for the Jaguars. Toss again. There's Brester. Has some room. Brester in for the touchdown. Coach Spears has found something he likes here on this little toss. It's a well-executed play. You get a good kick out. Instead of trying, on a normal toss, you want to try to log that defense and then playing wide. You just kick him out. And, and, and Rush was able to get right underneath it and score the touchdown. Forty-eight touchdowns on the year for Lance Brester. Yeah, forty-eight touchdowns. That is not a misprint <laughs> or a misspeak. That's right. So go over the two-point conversion. Byron motion, and he won't get there. Game adjustments. They're good. Good adjustment by Hitchcock County. Good answer from Howells Dodge after the touchdown from Hitchcock County. 8 6 now is the score. Here's a look again at the touchdown by Brester. Going back to the well, one too many times. Great play there. Excellent play by Tanner O'Brien. Able to fight off the block, get in there, and make the tackle. Job setting the edge there by Keenan Gaston as well. So 8 6 is our score. You know, you look at this Howells Dodge team and you see Brester, Bayer, Bellina, Budget is on the sideline. I don't know. It, it, it wouldn't be Howells Dodge without those names in this game, right? Amazing how that happens. Those family names just continue on and on and on. <laughs> And truth be told, it's awesome to see. Oh, absolutely. You have a passion and love for your home, and you stay there, and, and everybody's able to, to continue on the tradition. There's a reason Mike Spears has been there 27 years, won 10 state titles, including D1 last year. And now Brester to kick it deep. That'll be... Scott, who steps that back foot in, but will bring it out. Out past the 20 to the 24-yard line. Good solid return. Great effort going on the field today. Tough run there by Scott. Gets him in good starting field position. Let's get out of the field to Doug Duda. Well, guys, that's just the second touchdown Hitchcock County has allowed in the entire playoffs. But I was talking to the coaches ahead of time. They thought there were some nerves on their boys, not until they got to the stadium, but there were some nerves in pregame. Boy, that sure took care of itself on that first drive. Good gain on first down for the Falcons. Thank you, Doug. Good hit there by Caleb Perrin. Flying up, get a good stick on that. Yeah, the average for Hitchcock County to Doug's point in the playoffs, score 53, allowed two. That was the average. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's a good, good day at the office. <laughs> Not bad. I think most coaches would take that in the playoffs. <laughs> On the turf, Gaston loses it, picks it right back up, and then nowhere to go. So the mesh dropped it right there is Dominguez again. It will happen at times when you try to run this beer concept. Ball's out. It's a read. Both guys disagree on who should have kept it. The ball ends up on the ground. Got to recover though. Live to fight another day. Hard to believe that's a quarter in the books. <laughs> hey. What's a whistle? Oh, they, that's a quarter. How you doing? Keep it moving. We're going to run this football a lot in this game. This clock will be in motion. We have got 12 of the books already. It's 8-6. Hitchcock County with the lead here at Memorial Stadium.
opportunities. They're found here, and here, and here. They inspire her, motivate him, prepare them. And when those opportunities start here, they can take you anywhere. Wayne State College, where opportunities today prepare you to lead tomorrow. Explore WayneStateCollege.com. Coverage of the NSAA Football Championships on Nebraska Public Media is made possible in part by Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest Foundation, Nebraska Public Power District, Nebraska Kubota Dealers, Nebraska Corn Board, Aurora Cooperative, Constellation Energy. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. 8-6 is the score after 12 minutes. Ready to start quarter number two here from Memorial Stadium. Howells Dodge and Hitchcock County. Falcons took the early lead. Howells Dodge answered and now back on the field are the Falcons. It is, yeah, a beautiful day out. Look at that. Uh -huh. Sun's out, guns out. <laughs> it's 37 degrees at this rate. <laughs> On the draw, slips the tackle. Good carry there by Drew Scott. Down back of the field to Doug Duda. Well, you guys are talking about how nice it is down here. The Howells Dodge fan section would disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. If, if you're in the sun, you're on the yeah. west. That'll change later in the day. It's starting to work its way. The, at least the football team's in the sun. That is so true. It's probably a, what 20 degree difference. It feels like shady. <laughs> you know, we meant the temperature, not you, Doug Duda. <laughs> that too. Good discipline there again by Howells Dodge. Uh, Attempt County. to get the old jump off sides. Time out of the half. Did not work. Second time out for the Falcons. Fourth down, two to go. Ball in the 31. We're going to have a nice couple of days for state championship oh, yeah. in terms of weather. You go back to 19, we had snow on the ground and mm -hmm. you know, icicles. And yeah. Doug Duda was down there with his full mask on. I try to get around to as many practices as I can and, and add snow at one. Yeah. <laughs> Hitchcock County said there's a close to the public, so all you people out in the 308, I tried to get out there. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> I said the coach Rad told me that his yeah. practices were close to the public. Oh. So I was going to go out to the 308, but I did not make it. But yeah, it's snow, a lot of wind. It was, it was brisk. <laughs> Quick kick. Sort of. Oh boy, coach not happy about that. Randall Rath is upset there. I think he wanted a play run there, and instead they kicked it away on fourth and two. Give it to coach. He's got some pipes on him. We can, we can hear him up here. Yeah. That's, that's good. That's good work. I appreciate that. That's the play he didn't want you to see in practice. That's why you, <laughs> that's why you couldn't go to practice was that's, that's, because of that play right there. That is fair. It's very that's nice of you, Verz, though. You, Take your time, go across the state, yeah. watch these, watch every one of the teams here practice. It's a blast. I, I have an absolute blast. I'm very fortunate to get the call of the game, so it's a ton of fun. Toss to Bell on the left side. He's got some room and a flag, and that's going to back up and put the Jaguars behind the down and distance. They're going to call holding here on, on, on Hegeman. And it's 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 something that that offensive line get put in a tough spot in this. They're, they're trying to get that corner hooked, and it just doesn't work Blocking out. Blocking the back. Okay. On the offense. Replay first down. Another tough instance here when when you're engaged, but yet the the defender turns. Go. Yeah. Some refs will call this. That's just kind of part Ooh. of the game. Yeah. Maybe aggressive there. Yeah, that's not even an offensive line take. I think you're right there. <laughs> <laughs> but though, same guy. Yeah. Right? Yep. Tanner O'Brien. Yep. Always in the mix, always causing havoc up there. Give that man all, all due credit. He, he's making that thing tough up there for, for Howells Dodge. 
So that's going to end result as a 14-yard penalty to bring up first and 24. Sindelar under center. Here's Brester again. Brester has some room. Nice tip bomb. A lot of it back. About half of it, 12-yard gain by Brester on first down. They found something they really like here. The way that this is key or this is working right now is they're able to get to Schuler. Schuler does a good job. Gets a little just good technique there also by the right guard. Able to maintain contact on that and, and then drive his feet and keep that thing going. Tackle made by Drew Scott. Brings up second down at 13. So we'll call it a gain of 11 on the play by Brester. There is Mike Spears. to the left side this cuts it back has some room again spins out of one tackle and a nice gain on second down back to back good gains by lance brester worked one way we're going to try it the other way good job here on the toss again able to take good angles you see that pursuit there and then the cutback is available once anybody over pursues that cutback will always be there Third down. Went from first and forever to third and yeah. very, very manageable. Pirate fullback. And the toss once again is to Brester. He's got room and got the first down. Another flag is going to be called, and this will come back once again. It looked like they threw the flag right in the area of Justin Byer. Yeah, we'll have to see a replay on this. I didn't, I didn't see anything that egregious on this, but. The referee who gets paid the big bucks, he did see something down there. And it was a hold. You saw the call. Holding on the offense. 10 yards penalty. Replay third down. So two costly penalties here on this possession. What? I don't know. I don't know where that one is. Maybe back here. Didn't Schuler got held back there by him. anywhere? Nope. So third down and long third and we we'll call it eleven. Over the middle, got his man complete midfield breaks a tackle. Another stiff arm inside the thirty down to the twenty-eight yard line on the completion from Sindelar. To Brester out of the backfield. Good little play design here. Gonna motion Brester out of the backfield to the right. And then just slide it back across the formation to the left. Good job up front with all the pass protection. Able to let him just sit in that hole there in the middle. Catch the ball and then be the athlete he is and get the first down. Good throw there by Sindelar. Yeah, absolutely. Just a little spinner right across the middle. Let the, let the big dog eat. That is 12th completion of the year. That's what I'm talking about. That's a good season. Just under one per <laughs> Just under one per game. Give right up the middle, spins out of the first tackle. Good tough run there by Justin Byer. Making the presence known. It, it doesn't have to be for a touchdown. It just has to know that it's there. Been a good game. Call it four, second down and six. I like your spots. You're generous on your spots. I appreciate those. I appreciate yeah. that about you. <laughs> Try to be. Yeah. You might be an offensive lineman at heart. <laughs> Line judging. There we go. Good toss. Leads forward. Down to the 21. Third down and short upcoming. It's a good job here by right guard Hageman. Letting, letting Schuler be the aggressive player that he is, which you love to see in that middle linebacker. He, he just gets a little bit too wide, maybe just has to gear down a, a, just a stitch so that he can keep that thing forced back inside. And then they'll string it out, and then they'll just be able to run it out of bounds. But get a little bit over aggressive over the top, and then that cutback always seems to be there for Brester. So Howell's dodge on this drive has survived two holding penalties. It's cost him 20 yards. And still moving the football. Sindelar keeps that one, leans forward. Very near a first down, but maybe a half yard short. Bring up fourth. 
I think every territory has four down territory. Good hustle there by by Colin Gaston. Able to get over and wrap the QB up. I want to remind you to check out Big Red Wrap Up as we wrap up the Wisconsin game Wednesday at 7. There's some Huskers watching the game. It's this Wednesday on Nebraska Public Media World with Michael Severe, Sean Callahan, Jay Moore. That was a heartbreaking loss, Mers. Yeah, that was that was not ideal. <laughs> Timeout. I was listening, listening on the radio as I was driving back from the house to your cohort on the on the broadcast mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. you did a good job. I got after him a little bit last night on Twitter just to keep him honest. But then I followed up with the text and said you did a good job. <laughs> good job, buddy. That's the one and only Damon Benning, by the way. What? <laughs> what did you say? Don't don't Damon Benning football? Is that what you said? Yeah. Oh, don't say that. He gets mad. <laughs> he gets mad when I do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get one for that one. Uh, hey, let's take a look at uh, Lance Brester and his play thus far. Senior running back, 6'3", 180. Rangy got the stiff arm. This today just runs hard. Everybody yeah, hustling downfield yeah. to block. See the hands there on this one. Version for the first down. Very patient as well. Yeah. Love to see it. Good job by the boys up front too. Hageman doing a nice job up there as well. This is what you get from a Howells Dodge team. It's lean on you a little bit and lean on you some more. Very poised. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times they've been down this season, but I'm guessing it's not very many. And now they're able to go down. Unfortunately, the two-point conversion didn't work, but now you're just walking down the field. Penalty happens. Not a big deal. We'll get it all back. So an impressive group of young men. So we'll see what they drop here out of the timeout. Fourth down and one. Ball at the 20, make it 19-yard line. Toss has some room out there on the edge. Slips through, more room to his right. Cuts it back inside the five, down to the four, three yard line of the carry by Lance Brester. Hitchcock County on this decided that they wanted to sell out to ensure the first down would not be gained up the middle. If you look, they've got the box completely packed. There was an opportunity to get outside on that. Good scouting by the coach was able to get the toss out to Brester, convert the first down in a, in a shoelace away from a touchdown. 16-yard gain on the carry by Brester. And now first and goal, ball at the three. Give right up the middle. Near the goal line goes Justin Beyer, and Beyer in there for the touchdown. Good tough run by, by Beyer. My guy Mitchell, the mayor of Howells, told me that he was one to watch in this game. Mitchell is a fourth grader, by the way. Um, he, he, he literally knew everything about the program. Walked right up to me, stuck his hand out, said, hey, I'm Mitchell, nice to meet you. <laughs> and all the, all the coaches agreed, by the way, too. They're like, yeah, he's going to be the mayor sometime. <laughs> After he plays. Yep. Little toss back to Byer, reading his blocks, tries to take it outside and drug down and stop short. The second two-point conversion failed, and a nice job by the Falcons. Is that Drew Scott that made that play? It is Drew yeah, Scott. Yeah, Drew Scott. It's a good play there, buddy. Oh. Kenny Fisher, may he rest in peace. <laughs> He's very happy, just a good old full-pack dive into the end zone. I thought for a second it was going to be a trap, and I was going to get really excited, but it was not. It was just a good, tough run by the fullback. A little Makovica esque Yeah. Squatty body, yeah. shoulder brace on. Good tough run. A bowling ball, right? Yeah, right? We'll see another one of those tonight. Isaiah Weber. Ah, yes. He, he's he's a, a muscle. Yep. Well, there's the drive. Nine plays, 48 yards. Gives Howells Dodge its first lead of the game. 12-8 for Mike Spears. It does. Now time for... Hitchcock County to answer, right? Yeah. You, you're in this game. It's a good competitive game. Stopped on your last drive. Now it's time to get back down the field, get the ball in the end zone. 
There you saw a second consecutive state championship game for the consolidated schools of Howells and Dodge. I mentioned earlier in the 90s and the 2000s, those two towns of Howells and Dodge separately were almost making this an annual trip down to Memorial Stadium. Here is Scott with the return. Nice carry. Really good return. Out past the 25 to about the 27 or 28 yard line, and that's where the Falcons will take over. The Dodge won five state championships in six years from 94 to 99, and then you see Howells with nine titles under Mike Spears. 2000 to 2011, they consolidated in 2012, so there are no Bobcats anymore, there are no Pirates of old, it's the Jaguars, and that community finally coming together around this combined program. Nice toss to the outside and a good game. It's got a game of about nine, maybe eight or nine yards on first down. Good little wrinkle here, little option play to start this game. Everybody thinks Keenan Gass is going to have the ball. We're going to pitch it out to another guy that has about 1,000 yards this season, <laughs> Mr. Scott. Hustling down the field. Unfortunately, steps out of bounds right there. That, that's got to be tough for these guys, too, to get the bearing on the field. You know, they've got it taped off to the dimensions of the field. They're used to their own home yep. fields. It's, it's a little acclimation period for the boys. Let's go down to the field to Doug Duda. Well, I'll tell you, Hitchcock County lost a few of their fans, boys, because when the Huskers came down on the field, <laughs> all of the little kids went down over here to the tunnel that they always come out of. And give credit to the Husker players. They signed autographs. They took pictures. They were real patient. And now uh, watching the football game again. I'm guessing there's a lot of them that have never seen an eight-man football game. But now <laughs> the, the, the student section or the elementary kids are back rooting for their Falcons. One of my greatest memories from college is, is this day because we would we would come down and watch these and six man was still played here. Oh yeah, yeah. And everybody's eligible in six man. And so Taylor and Dish and, and everybody were watching this. And it's close game and, and they throw a pass to the center to win the game. And we picked this little guy up. We're holding him up in the air. It was like Happy Gilmore and his caddy. We got this dude waving in the air. He does he's scared and he doesn't know what to do. And his teammates aren't coming to help him. And but no, it, it's an awesome day. It's a great opportunity for these young men to be here in Memorial Stadium. Oh, that's the best. D6 was played on Friday out in Carney. We'll have highlights for that as Park D. Christian from right here in Lincoln won a state championship. We'll have that coming up in a bit. Good carry there by Gaston. Great little set of cat and mouse. You make this formation heavy to the right. And then you run Gaston to the left, make make Howells Dodge adjust their defense, then able to get the corner. Hegemeyer unfortunately was all, all, unable to get his outside arm free, but still hustled down and made the play. Hegeman, sorry. Good gain on first, brings up second down and short. The lobster with the kid slips one tackle and another and oh, another. Oh. And then ball on the ground, and it looks like the Falcons are on top of it. It'll bring up third down. And Kisker got back on it. It was number 20. Is it 20? Okay, yeah, Colin Gaston. Gaston, I think. yep. Good job of stringing that, that play out. You want to make that thing go as wide as possible. Eventually, you're going to run out of real estate. A good hustle there by everybody involved on both teams. Mm -hmm. So Coach, third down. Coach or a fan was this play. Boys in their displeasure about ball security. <laughs> oh, nice. Bounced off one tackle, leans forward very near a first down, down to the 19 yard line. And they're going to give him enough for a first. Colin Gaston there, another. Keep it honest, yep. but you can't bank on anything. You do not know which one of our three running backs that are over 900 yards rushing the ball is going to get it. And I, and I lumped Gaston as a quarterback slash running back. Back to the eye now for the Falcons. Toss out to Scott. Trying to get the edge, stretched it out. Play made out there once again by Andy Rodriguez, or Dominguez, Andy Dominguez. It's how you defeat those, right? You want that, that wide play, that toss play to just continue to go lateral. Then you're able to get the rest of your secondary support up. Good job here by 21, setting the edge. And down he goes. There is 
Andy Dominguez, who thought he may never play football. He has just one kidney. Doc said, nope, you will not play football. Andy disagreed as he makes another play. Boy, great quickness from Dominguez up front. Mm -hmm. They heard a little issue over that his mom. I'm sure mom had some sure. <laughs> mom, mom was not a fan of, of that happening. Well, mom eventually said, as long as you have extra padding, yep. we'll let you play. Yep. There was a time when he wasn't sure he'd be able to play. 6'3", good size. 6'3". Yeah. Just flies around. I mean, he's, he's good with his hands. He's good with leverage. It, it doesn't help. It doesn't hurt that you have a college defensive line coach. Right. Yes. Mr. Shabbat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, that doesn't hurt. Not at all. A good shoulder right into the blocker for a gain. Re Gaston gets the first, I believe. Really close. like the design of this play, right? You, you've had some success running your fullback up the middle. You fake to the fullback and reverse pivot out. Then you've got two linemen leading the way. This is just another way to run what some will call tag, but you see both those linemen pull. Quarterback's nice and patient in there. is able to get up the field, get a first down. So from the 18-yard line, run the same play. Work once, we're going to try it again. This time, Connor Kreikmeyer was there to make the play, number 55. Colton Clausen also in there getting in on the tackle. We're in, we're in one here, LP. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. We are in one here to start our day. Nearing the two-minute mark here in this first half. Toss wide. Good spin. Stayed on his feet. Drew Scott leans forward. What was no gain leans forward for a gain of about two. It'll bring up third down. Tough running in this game. You love to see it. Justin Byer does a great job stringing this out. He's there ready to make the play. Gets off the block. And just can't wrap it up. Good balance. Spin and turn. Unfortunately, a little slip. But who knows? Might have got a couple more yards. Yep. So out wide now goes Drew Scott. Hopping back to pass. Has a man open and just overthrew the intended receiver, Tritt Kisker. But this is well done here by Coach Rapp and his staff. Just a little tight end drag across it. You, you pull the safety out with a crossing right. It's almost a little form of mesh. We're going to run two players in different directions. Unfortunately, overthrew just a little bit. Fourth down. Let's go down to Doug. Yeah, guys, uh, he was covered by his defensive back, ran into the umpire, and that's why he was so wide open. If you check the replay again. So fourth down. Dropbacks again. Rolling to his right under pressure. And they're going to say down before he threw it. It will be a sack for the Jaguars. Aiden Meyer with a big play there. Take a look at it here on replay. Good discipline, receivers are covered. Good job of tackle there, get both legs. Ooh, ooh. yeah. Thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. A little fumbly. Does motion. I was like his, he was throwing, but I think if anything, it might have been grounding, right? The previous play is under review. So we have a buzz down from the tower, and we're going to review that previous play. And the question is, you wouldn't call grounding on the review. You would just say no fumble. Right. Yeah. And, and, and you want to yep. all due respect to, to the officiating crews. They do a great job. Yes. I feel I have a good relationship with them. This might be one I'm like, yeah, we're just going to put this as a turnover on down. Yeah. I think that the, that result is the same. Yep. I would it was not picked up in return for a touchdown. Let's just keep her moving here. But you do your due diligence and make sure you check it in. DV Sport system in play here in these state championships. They're going to say the arm was moving forward there. Still incomplete pass. So they could gain a few yards here on the incompletion. I'm glad you're doing the big boy stuff. 
Yeah. Because the field numbers, I would not be able to accomplish that. I would be like, all right, they're going to get this at the 35. I'm like, no, it's not 35. That's the 25. So, so glad glad just to be riding shock <laughs> so, on this little venture. What Verge is talking about is they have, obviously, for the eight-man game, this field is shortened to 80 yards instead of 100. So we have essentially yellow tape and white tape out there outlining the field. And what looks to be the 50 is actually the 40, and the 40s are the 30s, and the 30s are the 20s. And you got to do quick math. That's but <laughs> that's all you. I am just here to talk about the plays that are run and designed. <laughs> I know my role. I, I know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> uh, 120 to go, and that's what's remaining for the Jaguars. They still have two timeouts left. And here's our call. After review. After review. It was an incomplete pass. It'll be first down, Howells and Dodge, on the 14 and a half yard line. So they do gain some yardage there because it was at the 23. So that's a nine yard difference. It's a little longer field for the Jaguars. And they may be ground and pound, but they can strike quick. Mm -hmm. I, I was, as we look across the state, I was not part of that nation leading 348 academic all American. I was not involved in that phase. <laughs> oh, there's. Oh, what a play. Hit the backfield, spins away. Down to the near side. Boy, what a run and a break by Justin Beyer. I believe this is Kisker at the top of the uh, of the the play here for Hitchcock County that thwarts this whole thing. Able to get upfield, force it back inside, taking the blocker with it. Thirty-one there. Yes, that, it that was. Is a good job. That one, if anything, probably would have been closer to a holding call, but it was not. Spittle flying everywhere. Yeah, Hard hitting that? game. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, what a great shot there is with the angle of the sun and the camera angle. You could see. The spit fly. This is how it's supposed to be for state championship. Absolutely. Keep on the far side. That is going to be Sindelar. Sindelar is going to get hit out of bounds, and we're going to have a late hit call on the Falcons. This is just such a tough call for me to, 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 to watch. And, and I understand it's near sideline. Like Dead ball. Dead ball, late hit out of bounds on the defense. 15 yards, first down. So that will help the Howells Dodge cause, and I'm not sure Randall Seven. Rath likes to call. You're just barely a step out of bounds. I mean, there's no way, there's no way you can expect him to stop himself in this, like you, like you can't. It's physically impossible. It's a tough one there for Brown, but. I would say he even pulled up a little bit. Yeah. There wasn't a full-on push or shove. No. Tough one. Yep. So happen. what? 107 to go. Near midfield for the Jaguars. Back under center is Sindelar. He'll toss out to Brester. Breaks a couple still on his field. Leaning forward. It's good tough run. I mean, the first guy is not going to solo bring him down. And I think you can say that about a lot of the, of the players in this game. They're just running through tackles. Timeout taken by the Jaguars. Timeout. Howells Dodge. Second charge timeout of the half. So they'll have one timeout remaining. Howells Dodge has two left or one left? One. One. Yep. And Hitchcock County has one? Hitchcock County has one as well. Yes. Okay. I believe Lance Brester on that last carry went over 100 yards in this first half. Right at 100, 14 carries, 100 yards and a touchdown for Lance Brester. It's been tough sledding. It's definitely not something yeah. that he's used to seeing. Um, with the success that, that Howells Dodge has had on the little toss play they've run, be interesting to see if Coach Spears has a little toss pass involved in this. Could be something yep. that you may see. 
do think Mr. Brester's right handed though, so I don't know if he's going to go that way. Probably have to move over here Got to the left to get it back to the right. Get on the left dash? Yeah. Just a thought. Yep. Motion across, toss out here to Brester, cuts it back up. That's enough for the first down. Or you just give it to him, let him run it. <laughs> Good stuff running again on the top. A yes, little different look at a motion across to try to get Hitchcock County to move the defense or get get a little bit better angle on that outside backer that's been giving them problems. Creativity in the play call. On the reverse. Shoved out of bounds of the carry by Bayer. Thirty-six seconds remaining. Second down and six after a gain of four. Coach Rath's getting his money's worth on the side judge here. <laughs> He's making sure he knows <laughs> right. what if he agrees or disagrees with the call. There is Coach Rath. Fifth season, thirty-five and 15 and first ever trip here to the finals. Second down, Toss looking to throw. He's there looking downfield, and now he's going to keep it himself. And he gets out of bounds, and the clock stops. Good job of recognition here by Drew Scott, who I said his name wrong earlier. I apologize for that, but good recognition. They, they were trying to sneak Justin Byer out of the backfield. He saw it coming. It developed right into his lap. Just good play there. Good play with that young man. Yep. Good patience, trust your teammates too. That's hard for safeties at times because you, Brest, or Breston has had a, a lot of success being able to run the football. So you feel you gotta come help and run support, but you also have to maintain your discipline and your responsibilities. That's a good job, that's a good play. First down ball inside the 20 yard line. 29 seconds to go. In motion goes Brester. The Meyer check that now Brester with it. They try to get out of bounds. He does. They just Stop tried it again. Yep. <laughs> they just tried it again. Tried to slide over some motion that time. Did not work again. Drew Scott said, no, man, I, I got this. You, you put that one away, so, Coach Spears. I understand this play. This is not going to work. <laughs> Let's go down to Doug Duda. Ver's way to be all over the play call there. Brester, though, has tried three passes this year. 0 for 3. So maybe a little hesitant to pull the trigger, although he was covered. But... Good recognition by you, man. Yeah, it's like you played or something, Doug. No, a couple of things, but a couple of things. <laughs> that and when you scored 48 touchdowns, probably not your you probably <laughs> looking to throw it. <laughs> <laughs> Little toss. He's going to cut that back up inside. He is going to be met right at the 15 and a timeout taken by Howells Dodge with 17 seconds to go. Schuler, man. Schuler is a tough Howell's kid. Dodge. Their third charge timeout. Of Talked the about him a lot. Able to fight off the block. Here it comes. Just in the play. That's, yes. a, that's a good football play. Yep. Hands are active. You're trying to get off the block. Big 74, Cole Grover John is trying to get in your business, and you just fight off of it and go make the play. Everybody else rallies to the ball. <laughs> that's a tough kid. So final timeout taken there by the Jaguars. With 17 to go, and up by four here in the first half. Interesting to see what coach draws up here. You know, throwing is not a, a forte or a strong suit. Got third down, clock's ticking. So say you come up short on this on this play, you can't go up and spike it. If you get a fourth down spike, you turn the ball over. So some creativity will have to be needed here from, from Howell's Dodge. In Hitchcock County, if you're the Hitchcock County coaching staff, you got to fight for 17 seconds. Let, let's go into half, only down four. We get the ball to start the second half. All we got to get is, is two plays here and a stop. So third down upcoming. Brester motions out. Drop back to pass is Sindelar. Has some time, rolls to his left. He's going to keep. He's going to be stopped right at the 10-yard line, and that did not get the first down and did not stop the clock. So the clock continues to tick. Two, one, and that is going to do it for the first half of play. Big play there by Keenan Gaston, right? Yes. Patient in the middle. Coverage was good behind him. Sindelar tried to make a move. Didn't work. Good tackle. Good solid tackle. They're winning in the half for Hitchcock County. 
It's a big difference going in down, mm. you know, another touchdown. We're only at four and a half and you get the ball first. Halftime 12 8. Howells Dodge with the lead. But a good stand there late by Hitchcock County. Where he picks up another yard there. The clock stops, reset the chains. You never know. It's a free time. Great play. Yep. You get that first time, it's a free timeout. That stop is huge right there. Hitchcock County's got to love where they're at in the first half of this game. Everybody and their dog probably thought this was going to be Howells Dodge by, by 50. Yeah. Doug Duda is with Mike Spears. Well, Coach, uh, they made a nice stop on you in the uh, final drive there. Talk about what you were trying to accomplish. Well, you know, we are kind of got out of what we, we want to do because of the time-wise a little bit. And, uh, you know, we were just, that last play, we uh, thought maybe we could get uh, the Brester kid open, and uh, they did a nice job pass coverage, and we had to scramble and just ran out of time. Outside of that short first drive that Hitchcock County has, it's basically been defense for you. Uh, you run the ball. What do you think about the way your defense has been playing? Well, you know, if we stay assignment sound, we're pretty good. When we when we get out of our assignment, things don't quite go as well as we, we hoped they would. So we got to make sure we kind of shore that up at halftime and make sure the kids understand what their job is. And, Mike, uh, neither one of these teams have been in many of these games going into the locker room. Plus, it's a state championship. Uh, what's your message going in? Well, you know, we, we were here. We were at Humphrey St. Francis. It was 14-8 at halftime, and uh, we made some good adjustments. I, I shouldn't say the kids made good adjustments, and we came out and were able to establish the run a little bit. You know, we're able to run the ball. We just got to uh, maintain blocks, and it's an awful good team over there. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thanks for the time. All right, thank you very much. Well, they've been in a lot of halftime locker rooms at the state football championship Coach Spears has, and he's going to go see what he can do because uh, Hitchcock County will get the ball first to start the third quarter, 12-8 here at the half. Slobber knocker here at the state championship in D2. We'll be back for halftime festivities. Stay with us. Finding your story starts at a place where possibilities align with potential. Shadron State College, where adventures lead to accomplishments, where opportunities connect to engagement. With a wide range of undergraduate and graduate programs, plus thousands of friends, CSC has everything you need to find your story. To get started and schedule your visit, csc.edu. Count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We're for agriculture. For growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We're for the little guy with big guy dreams. We're for agriculture. We're for you. Nutrien Ag Solutions. of the NSAA football championships on Nebraska Public Media is made possible in part by Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest Foundation, Nebraska Public Power District, Nebraska Kubota Dealers, Nebraska Corn Board, Aurora Cooperative, and Constellation Energy. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. We're at halftime of the Class D2 State Championship. It's 12-8 Howells Dodge on top of Hitchcock County in this Class D2 State Championship. Pleased to be joined now here in the booth by Dan Masters, who's Assistant Director of the Nebraska School Activities Association, responsible for many sports, and maybe, Dan, the most important sport that you have is bowling, but we're not going to talk about that. We'll talk about softball uh, instead. The fall softball season concluded, but you, you, had a, you had a terrific tournament once again. We did. Great great week of softball, great weather, some great matchups. Yeah. yeah. So, talk about your weather out there because it was 
Well, you never it was know. Warm, right? but it was windy. <laughs> yes. um, but we'll take it. We got all the games in on time. Yep. And they do such a nice job at Hastings of hosting. They do. Very welcoming. Um, the committee out there does a great job of hosting. Tracy Douglas and her team. Um, and then we had some great championship games. Gretna came in undefeated. Yep. Marion gets them in the final. Um, Northwest, you see on the screen there, they beat Elkhorn um, in, a, in a good game there in Class B. And then our Class C games were the only ones that had the if necessary game. We had U10 me to beat. Um, I'm losing it now. Hastings St. Cecilia. Yep. Yep. You're seeing some of the pictures and highlights from out there at Hastings of the girls state softball tournament. You know, one of the challenges that it seems like you face in all sports is umpires, but especially in softball, the, both the recruiting and the retention of the umpires. It is. And it's something where, where it's a battle we're fighting in multiple sports, softball being one of them. Um, we're thankful, though, we grew by 10% this year, oh. which was awesome. We got a lot of new umpires in the mix, and hopefully we can retain them, get them plenty of work, and keep the fans off their backs, right? That's the important piece. Yeah, I would imagine that's, that's got to be one of the key initiatives there is trying to, as you take a look at the softball champs in Class A, Marion, NB, you mentioned Northwest, U10, Meet and see. That has to be one of the key initiatives is the communication to the fans and to the parents on the impact that they have on the success of you being able to retain officials. Certainly, players. certainly. And, and it starts with our schools, yeah. right? Setting some expectations for their fans at their local yeah. facilities and then following through when needed. Yeah. Um, talk about the, the cooperation you have out there in Hastings because I know it's while you have great facilities, you also, the community just really embraces this one. Yeah, I have a large number of volunteers that step up and host and help out, whether it's ticket taking or working in the concession stand. Um, we're really thankful for our partnership with Hastings. What are you hearing from the membership about uh, state championships and how it's going and any changes maybe? Possibly. We actually have a, in place right now three different versions of a format change to the state softball championships. We've been in a double elimination format for many years, and now the schools will decide on maybe moving to a winner-take-all final. Ah, so in other words, you get to a final through a double elimination process, almost maybe like a College World Series, two sides of a bracket? Very similar, yes. Yeah. Yep. And so far, the response to that has been? Very positive. They, again, they're, they're going to, the schools will have three different versions to look at in January, and we'll see what happens. Dan Masters, Assistant Director of the Nebraska School Activities Association, responsible for softball in another great tournament this summer in the fall, or this uh, fall out in Hastings. We're at halftime of the Class D2 title game. <sighs> Howells Dodge is on top by four, 12-8 here at Memorial Stadium. It's thanks to you that we're where we are today. We're proud to watch these communities grow because they're our communities too. Our neighbors, our friends, it's where we live. These are all our hometowns. And no matter what, the people who will continue to serve your needs with the hometown support you know and trust are just down the street. Cornerstone Bank, growing together. Phelps Memorial Health Center in Holdridge provides inpatient care and outpatient surgical and clinical services, including a new cardiac cath lab, orthopedics, oncology, labor and delivery, diagnostic imaging, and much more. Phelps Memorial is committed to serving patients and families with care. Learn more about their mission and community services at phelpsmemorial.com. This is a growing corn plant. It's not battery powered. It doesn't have a 300 mile range, but it's vital in our fight against climate change. Reducing 46% of carbon emissions and producing clean burning ethanol. Corn ethanol is the climate solution we need now. Constellation is a natural gas supplier helping inspire young Nebraskans through hands-on learning. Constellation has given more than $320,000 to 4-H and FFA organizations across the state, helping support youth in your community with opportunities to achieve real-world success. Because we believe that powering communities means empowering our future leaders. With Constellation, a contribution to 4-H and FFA is in the stars. Back here at Memorial Stadium, 12-8. Owls Dodge on top of Hitchcock County. Hey, good time for you to connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. You can add a comment or catch up on the latest Nebraska sports information. 
Bears. Make sure to like Nebraska Public Media Sports and Big Red Wrap Up and join in the conversation. Well, we mentioned earlier that the D6 six-man football championship was held this past weekend. Six-man playoffs featured several upsets as Parkview Christian seated number five took on number six, Pawnee City. It was a chilly night out in Kearney for the D6 championship in the first half. Senior running back Chandler Page got loose for a 54-yard touchdown. That led to a 24-point cushion. Pawnee City led by Andy Maloney's 123 yards rushing. The Indians scored three touchdowns in the second half, but unable to slow down the Patriots. On the night, Page rushed for 281 yards and a couple of scores, 44 yards receiving for Braden Ulrich. And two touchdowns led Parkview's attack through the air. And the Patriots won their first state championship in program history. The final was 50 to 25. Parkview Christian is the first Lincoln school, get this, to win a championship since 2011. Unbelievable statistic. I figured Lincoln, the second biggest outfit in the state, would, would have a lot more of those. But congratulations yeah. to those young men. Let's take a look at some highlights from the first half of this 12-8 Howells Dodge lead. And Hitchcock County wasted no time. First drive, marched right down the field, took control early. They did a great job, and you got to get it to your playmaker. You, you got to make sure Keenan Gaston is the guy that's toting the mail for you. Good job here, recognition. Everybody's covered, scrambles up the field, gets a key first down in that first half. And just falls in the end zone. Follow your brother in the end zone for a touchdown. Two point conversion there. Could have been picked off by Lance Prester. Great read on the play. Tipped up though and converted. And then Powell's Dodge answers. Great run here by Preston. It is. It's just pure effort. Play designed to go to the left, cuts back all the way to the right, just gaining hard, tough yards. Preston one more time in there for the touchdown. That cut the lead to two. And then a big play after a couple of. 10-yard holding penalties. They managed to navigate that, complete that on fourth down, and then punched it in to take the lead. Here's the numbers through the first half. Good defensive half for Howells Dodge, limiting Hitchcock County to 78 yards. Something they have it. So, you know, we've talked about how Howells Dodge adjusted half, and they're not used to this. Hitchcock County isn't used to this either. They put up <laughs> just as many points and give up just as few. So it, it's going to be a battle this second half. It's a really fun game to be a part of and watch these young men get after it. Howells Dodge with the lead here at the half. The fullback in for the touchdown. That's Justin Byer. Love to see it. The Jags the lead. This is Nebraska. <laughs> a lot of land comes with a lot of work. The Kubota MX Series is ready to help. You can mow, move hay bales, grade, and clear brush and snow. Equipped with a cab for any conditions. Loader lift capacity for jobs of all sizes. Hydrostatic or gear transmission options. The Kubota MX Series. For more information and participating Nebraska Kubota dealers, KubotaNESports.com. It may be small, but this little bean fuels power. It powers a food industry as a source of protein. It's a fuel that powers diesel engines while reducing emissions. It powers a state economy and bottom lines, and it powers the rest of the world as a Nebraska export. Yeah, it may be small, but we're finding more ways for this little bean to power Nebraska. After concussion, returning to the classroom is a priority of the NSAA. All brains return to learn. Not all brains return to play. After recognizing that an athlete has suffered a concussion, it is important to monitor the symptoms in the classroom before allowing the athlete to return to extracurricular activities. The NSAA requires coaches in all sports to take a concussion course once every three years. More information is available on our website, nsaahome.org. Student athletes are students first, athletes second. Coverage of the NSAA Football Championships on Nebraska Public Media is made possible in part by Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest Foundation, Nebraska Public Power District, Nebraska Kubota Dealers, Nebraska Corn Board, Aurora Cooperative, 
Constellation Energy. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. We are at halftime here in the Class D2 State Championship. 12-8 is the score. Howells Dodge with the lead. And if you would like a DVD of today's game from the NSAA High School Championships, it's easy to pick one up. Just call 800-868-1868 or visit nebraskapublicmedia.org. Just $19.95 plus shipping and handling, and you can relive all of the excitement from this year's State championship, four years to come. Let's go down to the field to Doug Duda. All right, we've got a 12-8 game here at half, and for the first time this year, uh, these boys are trailing, but it's a heck of a state championship. Randall Rath, what do you think about the way you've played so far? Uh, we played really well the first quarter, and then we got a little bit caught up, I think, with our emotions, let the game be bigger than it is. We just got to get back to doing what we do. This is a defensive battle. Conversely, it's usually been a lot of offense. How does that change the way the second half plays out? Well, I, you know, it's still going to be that way. That's where both teams hang their hats. We just got to find a way to move the ball and then, you know, stop them. A lot of the things you said in pregame about what you have to do, you are doing. How can you do them better? Yeah, keep executing. Keep executing. All right, Coach, good luck in the second Thank half. You. Thank you. Appreciate Randall Rath, head coach at Hitchcock County. Played a few in Kansas. Now he's here at Memorial Stadium on his way hopefully for Hitchcock County fans to their first ever state championship. Back up to you. Thank you very much, Doug. There are the Hitchcock County Falcons. Yeah, Randall Rath coached for a while in Kansas. In fact, he was the fastest to 100 game games won in a coaching career in the state of Kansas. And coached in the Kansas Shrine Bowl. Said they have to take care of the football here. Don't get behind the sticks. He certainly did that well in that first drive. Get all the coaching cliches in there at your halftime interview. <laughs> Gotta protect the ball. Gotta play good, sound, fun, battle football. Execute. Yeah. You could tell uh, that probably wasn't on the real top of Coach Rath's list. Did the interview? Do, do <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> top, top three things to do at state. Yeah. <laughs> interview with Doug Duda, not number one. No offense, Doug. No offense at all. But it's like, hey, I got some stuff. I gotta go get these dudes ready to roll in the second half. We get the ball first. I want to walk this thing down the field, score, and get the lead back. Love the intensity. Yep. You just in the two ends of the spectrum. Coach Spears, just hey, this is what we gotta do. Yep. That's how we gotta do it. And I thought I had my dinner plans in Omaha all planned out, Virgil. I guess I'm gonna have to change those. Oh, you'll be in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, guys. I mean. Hitchcock County, it's the first time here. Their fans have been in it from moment one to right here with the team coming out. Howells Dodge, they're used to being here. I just probably think Howells Dodge a little more nerves from the fans, maybe not from the football players, because they're wondering why they're not up by more. It's a good point. It's, yeah. it's gone back yeah. and forth, but I mean, Hitchcock County, they're not here to lay down. Like they, they, know what they do they know they're a good football team they play physical you know now it's time Keenan Gaston's got to be your guy he doesn't necessarily have to be the guy running the ball he's got to be the guy distributing the ball and using all the weapons that they have available so th this what we're into in here boys we're, we're gonna have a game one bounce picked up by Scott at the 10-yard line out past the 20 to about the 20 Three yard line. And that is where Hitchcock County will begin this second half. Randall Rath in his fifth season sends out Keenan Gaston. 44 yards on 10 totes in that first half, including the touchdown. See what adjustments have been made here by Hitchcock County to try to open up some lanes for all of their running backs to go. Nice play and a short gain on first down. Good job once again, Andy Dominguez. Yep. He, he's a handful in there, and it's not necessarily the power. He does have power, but his agility, he swam through the back door, right? So any defensive line coach anywhere will always tell their guys never back door that play. He went away from the direction of the play, able to fly down the line of scrimmage and make the tackle. That's a, that's a big time play by that young man. Second down and eight 
Gasson will keep it. Follows his fullback into the hole. Gain of five. That'll bring up third down. Just a little get back there by center Taylor Hubble able to make a good block there and, and open up the hole for his quarterback. It's 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 going back and forth there with that center and that nose guard. They're getting after each other real good. So third down and three. He began by Gaston leads forward out to the 35. That's enough for a first down. Good conversion there, just a solid off tackle, little lead ISO type of play. Picking up the first down. First possession of the game for Hitchcock County. They took it 31 yards and punched it in for their only score. Now the opening drive of the second half. Pick up a first down, ball at the 35. to throw has a man out there go behind the pull in Trent Kisker touchdown Falcons coach Rath goes back to the well here right we tried this little drag play with Kisker earlier in the game it was just overthrown a little bit that time Gaston right on the money Brester sees it Goes to intercept it and unfortunately misses it for the second time in the game. Should have, have a couple picks, was un, unable to make the play on the two point conversion earlier in the game. Big opening drive for Hitchcock County to take the lead. And now trying to extend that lead to four with a two point conversion. Big play here. Get, get a stop for, for Howell's Dodge to keep this thing. They've been unable to do. Well, there goes Gaston right up the middle and has it. Three. Two two-point conversions give Hitchcock County the lead. Just a little drag across the field. Brester sees it instantly. Goes to make the catch second deflection into the arms of the opponent. <sighs> Kisker finishes it off over the touchdown. Thought he had the pick. He did. And Kisker sticks with it. Great concentration. <laughs> I guess you're, you're in your head. You're like, am I gonna have to tackle? What are we gonna do here? The ball tips, <laughs> falls into your arms, and then you're like, I better run. I gotta get in the end zone. <laughs> Good concentration there by that young man. Good opening drive here to start the second half. A minute 46 is all it took. 150, 146. First time they touched the ball in the first half, they score. First time yep. they touched the ball in the second half, they score. Now up to Howells Dodge to answer. I don't know about you, I wouldn't mind a little back and forth here the rest yeah. of the game. Keep it exciting. <laughs> Mr. Everything kicks one in the end zone yep. for a touchback. There are the numbers for Brester in the first half, 19 for 123 and a touch. Be interesting to see how Coach Spears uses Brester in this half. Decoy, main ball carrier. Go to him right away. And not much there for Brester, maybe one. This won't show up in the stat sheet. But Keenan Gaston here. Yeah. Keenan Gaston comes up and sets the edge. Yes. Says, you are not going outside. I'm forcing you to go inside. It's a good play. Got that, that's just a solid fundamental play. Mm -hmm. Schuler cleans it up. Yeah. Second down and nine now from the 16. Slip through, Brester cannot get by the tackle. Had one man to beat, Scott holds on to pull him down after a gain of about seven. 
Get a little different look here. You're going to run your tackle and guard pull on them both to the right side. Good patience by Brasher to wait for the hole to develop and then get right underneath that. Uh, get some positive yards. So third down up coming here and a big one early on in the second half for the Jaguars. Under center goes Sindelar. Get to Byer again. Byer just shy of a first down. It's going to be fourth down at about a foot upcoming. The yards are getting tough in the middle of the field right now. And Hitchcock County is doing a great job of eliminating the outside of the field. Coach Spears doesn't hesitate. Here we go. Look for some movement here up front from the Hitchcock County yeah. defensive line. They're trying Big to figure it out right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> Double in there. Keegan Schuler right behind him on fourth down. About a foot to go. Follows his. Big setter Cole Grovijan into the hole and gets the first down. <laughs> Good job there also by Connor Kr Krakenmeyer. Able to get down. The, the, the tough part of quarterback sneak, right? If you're an offensive line guy or just a blocker in general, you want to make sure that inside gap is always protected just in case somebody shoots that you're not quite ready for. Right. But they'll also you know, have the advantage of running back come up and shove you in the back and, and torque your spine to try to get that first ah. down. <laughs> Is it recovered? It is recovered by the Falcons. And oh, there he is again. Have a day. Oh, I don't want again. Trent Kisker. <laughs> Have a day. Boy, Kisker's had some plays. He has. He has. Howell's dodging for the going to try to get a little, a little running play set up for Justin, By Justin Byer. A little miscommunication here on the snap. Going to try to hit that backside with the trap. Good hustle there by Kisker to get in and get the ball. He is flying around. Diagnosis yeah. the play. Beats the quarterback to the ball. Huge swing and momentum. Big opportunity here for the Falcons. Hitchcock County now with the lead and the ball in Jaguar territory. Gaston. With a gain of about five on first down. Starting to grind it out, right? Runs the ball, falls forward as he gets tackled. Gained another two after contact. I'll say six, second down and four. Gaston with a toss back to Scott. Not much there for Scott. And a big hit from Lance Brester. Yeah, it came flying downhill fast on that toss. That diagnosed. Cap is good, 45 degree angle, delivered a good blow there. <sighs> Setting the edge again though by number six. Britton Sindelar gets up there, make sure that all kind of either bounces outside, we can run out of real estate, we gotta turn it up to where my teammates are. No gain of the play, third down, four to go. Makes the toss, spins, makes it down to about the 15 yard line. It's going to bring up fourth down and a big fourth down upcoming for both of these teams, for the Falcons and the Jaguars. Got to make sure if you're Howell's Dodge, you keep your emotions under control here. You don't want to fall for, for a hard count where you jump offside and give them a free first down. Key the ball, play fundamental defense, wrap up when you get there. For Hitchcock County, protect the ball. You got short yardage where you want it. You got one of the better players that's ever played like football in the state of Nebraska. Leading, leading yard gainer. He's just got to get forward and get a first down. Gaston is the fullback. He gets it piled up right at the line, and I don't oh. think he got it. You got one spot, got it, and one doesn't. Justin Beyer. They're going to bring the chains out. It's going to be about a half yard short of the. Yeah. Another look. Boy, this is a play here. Just this is a defensive end. I believe that's 55. I think that's Colton Krakenmeyer that gets down in there. 
Rackmeyer was there. Meyer was there. Good job of the defensive end spot. You're 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 in that. You're getting yeah. blocked, and you still have enough power and strength to make to keep time yourself out in on there. the field. TV timeout. Timeout down to the field. Hitchcock County comes out in this second half and puts eight on the board. They've regained the lead, 16-12. Have you heard about FAFSA? It's like a like a form you fill out. Fill it out and you get money for college. Easiest way to get money for college, hands down. F-A-F-S-A. -F -S -A. It's a life hack. It's your way in. So you want to help me pay for college? I'm down. Heck yeah. Definitely. How is this not trending on all the things? It took me like 30 minutes to fill out. So easy. How much am I going to get? This is a hidden gem. Fill out your FAFSA. FAFSA. Drink water, buckle up, fill out your FAFSA. <laughs> Electricity, it makes life easier, more productive, brighter, possible. Yet we only think about it when we don't have it. The next time you're doing, well, anything, think about how electricity makes it all possible. And know we will be there, powering your every day, every day. Well, there is head coach Randall Rath in his fifth season. What an emotional moment it was last year after the semifinal loss at home. He had just got done speaking with his team, and they got together, and they prayed for his middle daughter, Kaylin, who'd been on the kidney transplant list for about five years and battling an autoimmune disease. And after they got done saying a prayer as a team, his wife walked over. She's crying. He didn't know what it was about. And he said, Kaylin is getting a kidney. And an entire community is rallied around Kaylin, who's doing terrific. The donor was a friend of their daughter's. It's somebody that he actually coached in basketball in Oakley. The daughters grew up together. And so thankful for Kaylin's health and that she was able to get the kidney transplant. Great story of community there. Things like that always put games and life yeah. into perspective, too. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's awesome that it's all worked out. And, and Cheers to continued health. Gate of five on first down brings up second down. Jaguars trailing by four. Nifty move there. Got out the backside, but Sticking with it once again and a nice play by Drew Scott. Drew Scott could just tackle. <laughs> he, he is about his life. Rest of everything gets plugged up. He knows the cutbacks there. Let it over pursue. Drew Scott says no. Nope, not gonna happen, but also a little help there from, from Colin Gaston as well. Brings up third down. Third and short, toss to Brester again. Tries to get the corner. Enough for a first down out past the 25 to the 27 yard line. He's up there by Mason Schilke coming up, getting the leg, making sure Brester's down on the ground. Brester now near 150 yards in the game. That long of 31. Back at the top of the eye is Brester. Sindelar will keep it himself. Got a little adjustment here by Hitchcock County. Their, their defensive tackles are not playing as wide as they once were. Gives them an angle, gives, gives Howells an angle to block down Colton Clausen. There's able to wash down just, just to open up space, right? And, and Howells Dodge is perfectly content just in this grind house. We're gonna grind and grind and grind, see if you can do this the whole rest of the way. So Caleb Perrin brings in the play from Mike Spears. On second and six. Cinderella the toss back again to Brester. Short game there, nice job up front. Tanner O'Brien was there. 
as well as Keegan Schuler once again. Good stick, good fundamental football. I mean, I mean, you're playing hard, you're playing with your hands, you're fighting off blocks. When the tackle is there to be made, you make it and wrap up. Really, really impressive job by Hitchcock County. Third down and four. Long count here for the Jaguars. Toss back to Brester. He's got a block out in front of him. Spins out a one and leans into Falcon territory for a first down. Down to the field to Doug Duda. Guys, we may know that this is Coach Rath's first time coaching here at Memorial Stadium, but his defensive end and O-line coach Scott Porter was here three consecutive years as the head coach at Blue Hill from 2006 to 2008. Wakefield got him twice, and then they won the state championship that third year over Bergen. So he knows what it's like to be on this sideline. A couple of other coaches on that staff for Hitchcock County that were here the last time Clarkson was in, both Wes McCorney, Mark Ertz, were assistants on that team, who are now coaching for Hitchcock County. Second down and seven. No pressure, he's going to keep it himself. Nice play there by Keegan Schuler. The least surprising statement of the day. <laughs> right. Brent Sindelar breaks the corner. like, man, I got some space. I'm about to make some yards. Schuler says, no, 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 my guy. Nope. I, I got you right here. Very, very sound fundamental football player. Third down and seven. Brester again. Brester breaking a couple tackles. That's very near a first down inside the 30. Just the relentless nature of, of Hitchcock County. It, Brester has been steps away, shoelaces away from making just the, the game score or the game leading touchdown. And but it's just it's a foot, it's a wrap up, it, it, it's something. There's always it's just a good job by those guys playing good, tough football. Mason Schilke there on that tackle, number 13. Really good game there on third, very near a first down. They'll stretch the chains out and that much short. So fourth down upcoming. Big fourth down play here for the Jags. Down by four. Inside two minutes to go in the third quarter. Thing you gotta love about eight-man football. Yeah. Zero. And I know this is a very short fourth down. There's zero thought on fourth down. Like, nah, right. We ain't doing that. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> they put it eight times this year. They were going the for it. Okay. <laughs> the ninth was here at the state from their own info. So that's right. Well, here they go. Ready to go right this away. This is blown wow. in, too. Yeah. Team was not ready to go. Still hustling back from the sideline. Howells Dodge takes advantage of it. Here's the thing. Those referees will warn you. Coach, get your guys out on the field. Get your guys out on the field. Coach Spears notices this. Just hustles them out. Just a sneaky little, yep. little thing. But, but practiced and ready to go. Led to the first on fourth down. Ball on the ground again. And this time the Jaguar is on top of it. Sindelar got a little anxious there, wanted to make sure he could get out, get the pitch, and, and get the block then. Got to stay underneath there, make sure he pull his hands back there, and the ball just squirts out. Fortunately, good bounce for the Jaguars. He's able to recover. Brings up second down now in 12, and they'll lose yardage again. And what a play. There's Trent Kisker again. Yep. Taylor Hubble. They've been doing a lot of slant with the nose guard, they being Hitchcock kind. They've been slanting back and forth. 
pick the right direction that time. Hubble slants right into it and is able there to finish off the block. Take that back, that wasn't a slant. He's just pursuing down the yeah. line. Those are good plays where you're half fallen. You know you've been blocked. It's like, I got to fall this way and get a tackle, get an assist. So now third and long. To pass. Throws it across the middle, has his man inside the 20 yard line. Good gain on third and 15. Picked up about 12. That'll bring up fourth down. Good grab by Aiden Meyer, the tight end. Oh, nice pass. That was a really good pass. You notice a lot of the routes they like. They're going to cross the field. They're going to they're going to come in some manner. Try to create confusion in the secondary. So that's going to do it for third quarter action. Hitchcock County regains the lead. Fourth down when we come back. Participating in multiple Nebraska high school activities has taught me the value of teamwork. I learned how to be a strong leader among my peers. We set goals as a team and work hard to accomplish them. I strive to excel not only in the classroom, but on the playing field. The Nebraska School Activities Association providing opportunities in 25 activities for our member high schools. NSAA activities, the other half of education. The 2022 NSAA State Football Championships continues tomorrow on Nebraska Public Media Sports. Visit nebraskapublicmedia.org slash sports for game times. Live streaming is available at Nebraska Public Media website and on the Nebraska Public Media app. Hitchcock County took the lead. Howells Dodge came back to regain. And now here in the third, Falcons lead. We've got a fourth down upcoming to open up this fourth quarter of play. Fourth down, calling a long three. Pass to Brester. Nowhere. Nothing doing. And once again, we call his name Keegan Shearer right there along with Trent Kisker. Yeah, they. They sniffed that one out. They're, they're, we were talking about it at break. There's a lot of ways you can go. Keenan Gaston got both ankles there. Schuler, of course, there to clean it up. As he always is, always around the football. Howell's Dodge defense now has to answer the bell. So they'll turn it over on downs here to start this fourth. 11.56 to go in the game. A quarter away from a state championship. And the Falcons have never won a state title looking for their first ever nice drop play scott spins through one two flags on the ground and that's going to come back they have a lot of laundry on that one we really like that little play design mm. the threat of a throw probably not there but anytime you put that ball up in the quarterbacks here the defense will react they, they always do they always will <laughs> Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty, still first down. So, one of the keys to the game, obviously, for Coach Randall Rath was do not get behind mm -hmm. the down and distance, and they'll be behind here. There's the hold right there on 82. Mm -hmm. are always tough. Eight yard penalty brings up first down at 18. 12 yard line for the Falcons. <laughs> Not much there once again in the middle. It's Rod. It's uh, Dominguez. 
with first contact. Had a couple, had a couple there, a couple guys away from that one. I want to go back to the drawing board with that one. Had a couple guys waiting to make that tackle. Loss of one, second and nineteen. Can you design something to, to get guess, Gaston in space, mm -hmm. or can you get a receiver, but like your little drag routes with your tight end? I would watch the wing here in this instance. Timeout is going to be called by Randall Rath. Timeout on the field. First charge timeout. Good play there by Gerg. Good call by, by Coach Rath. He didn't like the way it looked. Mm -hmm. No no sense in taking the chance. Make sure, you, I know it's second and long. You've got 11 to go in the fourth. But if you, if you feel you have a play designed, they can be executed and you think there's any hesitation by your team, take that timeout. Yep. Can't take them with you, good friend of mine, Matt Hoskinson. <laughs> Always likes to complain about time management in every form of football ever made at any level. Well, look at this streak 25 consecutive for Mike Spears and the Jaguars of Howell's Dodge. Almost two years since they lost. Almost, it has been two years. Yeah. More than those, uh, like, those put in a lot of work. Those take a while, those two year winning streaks. Those are always, always difficult. So second down and long. Understand too, you don't need it all back in this play. Okay, you get yourself to, to third and manageable. This is a pretty good option. Good play right up the middle, carried by Gaston. Picked up about half of it, so third down and long. The power of motion, right? They motion uh, receiver across the formation. I told you to watch that wing on the last one. There goes motion. You got the thread jet sweep. You have Brown looking something for block. Gas and Abel just come back up in there right behind him. Or Scott. Scott looking for someone to block. Big third down here. I would say this is quarterback draw. He's got motions out, back to throw, and it is QB draw. Keeps it himself. Hard hit right at the 25, maybe 26 yard line. Some pad popping on that one as <laughs> Gaston gets up slowly. Justin Byer got, got him a lick there. He sees this, gets a little push on the receiver, and knows I got to make the play. There's pad popping out there. Aiden Meyer also in helping out on the tackle. <sighs> Crack Meyer in to try to get the ball loose. Second punt upcoming. The other one was the quick kick on fourth down. This they're actually in punt formation to kick it away. It's going to take a nice roll down inside the 10, six to the five, inside the five, and a terrific punt for. Gaston inside the five. Big stand there by the Howells Dodge defense. Getting the offense the ball back, get the opportunity to get the score. Another stop in this. If my punter could pull that off every time, I might think about doing that tomorrow. Oh. Like that was that was well. You could tell nobody's really used to the punt formation. Not a lot of pressure on that one. Wow, they gave uh, Colin Gaston 50 yards on that punt. He was averaging 31.2 over his four punts on the year. So okay. this was, this will increase his average. Yep. Just playing safe, making sure no fakes happen, no, no funny business. So here are the Jaguars from deep in their own end zone. Sindelar with the carry. Three yard gain for. Britton Sindelar, the 5'9 senior. Again, Howell's Dodge trying to go back to back. They won a state title last year in D1. Dropped down to D2 this year. 25 game win streak on the line as well. Sindelar under center. Toss out to Brester again. Got a block. Now 
past the 10 to about the 12-yard line. Four to go, third down. Just a little toss as we've seen many times. Different blocking variations on it. Sometimes you'll see the fullback go to the outside linebacker, sometimes to the middle linebacker. Depends how they want to switch it up. Positive yards, third and two is the result. Just been impressed with the defense that we have seen on both sides of the football yeah. here, Verse. We expected maybe in an eight-man game to see a bit of a track meet given these offenses. And then you're looking at the numbers, right? The both offenses have put up all year. Flag on the play. Flag comes in late. We'll have to see what the call is. Yeah, face mask. I think it was a hold. It yeah. came in right at that when the tackle was being made. This is going to give the Jags a first down. Face mask on the defense. Five yard penalty. First down. Crowd Mike picking up the reaction of what was likely a fan. Yeah. Don't think they agree with that call. <laughs> you see the replay here. Again, tough sledding, tough yards. Ooh. Huh. Well. And now the crowd the reacting ball. to it after seeing it on the big screen. So it's a first down. Brester carrying some tacklers with him for a gain of nine yards. It's interesting to see how Coach Spears is adjusting this. Hitchcock County is switching up their defensive front. They're playing out like wider tackles at some point, inside tackles at other points, but they're able to call the play correctly. They're able, so I'm wondering if, if, if Sindelar has any ability to, to change that at the line because you'll see it, the blocking is, is smooth on it. There's not a lot of, of thought in it. It just, it just flows right out of there. Second down and short. Sindelar back under center. Motioning out is Brester. Tripped up, no game. Boy, well, that's uh, Drew Scott. That's some great discipline defensively for the Falcons. They don't all have to be hit sticks. The guy just has to get on the ground. Sindelar sees that it's open up. Oh, I'm sorry, number nine. So, that was Keenan Gas. Shocker. Gaston, yeah. <laughs> Shock. I should have just known. I should have just said that. But yeah, all you got to do is get a foot. Down he goes. Third and very short. Toss to Brester again. Oh, Brester's going to be stacked up and lost a yard. That's going to bring up fourth down for the Jaguars after they had second and less than one. That answers my question because the defensive front moved a little bit inside on that one. Again, O'Brien, 82, and they're able to make just a good, solid, aggressive play. When you want to disrupt the toss, you just want it to go lateral. You don't want it to hit the hole that it's built to go to. Big play, fourth down and one. Give to the fullback, leans forward, and driven back right near the marker, and I don't think he got it. This is all going to determine by the spot. It is very close. They're going to have to bring the sticks out. Getting up slowly is Taylor Hubble. Let's give to the fullback, Justin Beyer, and there is. Schuler's got to be involved somehow. Schuler probably made that tackle. Stretch it out, and it is short. that short. Big stand here by Hitchcock County with 5.44 to go in the I'm game. Out. For an injured play. Huge stand there by the Hitchcock County defense. Good job by Colin Gaston there, yeah. finishing that up. Down to the field to uh, Doug Duda. 
Guy, as they escort Taylor Hubble off the field, that means backup center time. He has been anchoring this offensive line. And so watch for the center quarterback exchange here on a crucial series for Hitchcock County as they bring him over to the sideline. Tanner O'Brien's coming in, a guy that's made multiple plays in this game in, in big situations. Puts my mind at ease a little bit in that scenario. He, he's, a, he's a gamer, he's a grinder. Turning for yards is Keenan Gaston. Anytime you get a new center in the game, super simple way for all you coaches at home. Have your center sit down, have your quarterback lift him up as high as he can so you have tension in between the two areas. No problem at all. <laughs> Told you, Brian, just ride the bike. I'm here to play football today. <laughs> Don't care what position, just put me in the game. Here we go. Makes the toss. Very close to a first down. And now with the clock ticking inside five minutes. This is a crucial drive for both teams. It is. Just fake little toss. Quarterback keeps it, follows the fullback. Again, Keenan Gaston running the football, always falling forward for extra yards. It's going to be third down and less than a yard. Nervous mom shot in the stands. Always a good one. <laughs> Always a good one. <laughs> Arms fully crossed. Certainly four down territory as Keenan Gaston under center. Gaston keeps it himself and has a first down down to the 15 and a fresh set of downs. And time continues to tick away. There's a little QB off the off the edge. A little bobble on snap. Understandable though with your center coming in. He knows he's got to get off on that. He's got Dominguez right over the top of him. He's got to make sure that he can get that get that handle. Boy, this Hitchcock County fan base can certainly feel it. Falcons are close. They have never won a state football championship. Taylor Hubble back in the game. 350 away from doing it. They snap it with one on the clock. Nice job defensively there, driving Drew Scott backwards. Dominguez was there, along with Caleb Perrin and Justin Byer. Taylor, two games now, right? For Howells Dodge, you have to make sure that you're trying to strip that football. Hitchcock County, two hands on the ball at all times. Don't let a fumble be the reason the momentum shifts in this game. They will be able to take this down at nearly inside two minutes with good clock management. Boy, big hit. That's Lance Brester coming up with the hit on Drew Scott. Down now to the 10-yard line. Tennessee is cranked up. Good pursuit here literally by everyone on the Howells Dodge defense. All going lateral. Brester there to finish it up. Rodriguez, of course, has him wrapped up down low. Third and five, ball right at the 10. They need the five for a first down. Keep it in, Gaston, not much there off the edge. Aiden Meyer with the, with the tackle and a timeout. It is taken by the Jaguars. Getting about to that time for Coach Spears. He, he has to start using these you get. The clock becomes more valuable. And that's gonna bring timeout. up fourth down. First charge timeout. Been an impressive game for the quarterback for Hitchcock County. The Falcons, Keenan Gaston. He came in with 1,500 yards rushing, 650 passing. It's interesting to watch, too. Sometimes players have had a ton of success during the year. When the game isn't going the way that, that you're used to it going, how do you react? He's been calm, he's been cool, he's operated the offense, he's made great plays on defense. 
he knows there's other ways he can contribute besides the thousands upon thousands of yards he's had rushing. Right. It, it's cool to see a kid that can handle the moment the way he is today. Moment does not get bigger than this right here. 2.28 to go. Fourth quarter, fourth down and three. Hitchcock County with the lead. Motioning out is Scott and a timeout taken by Gaston. Didn't like the way that the, the Howells adjusted to that motion. As Coach Rath called a timeout. Now they'll go back to the drawing board, come up with something, and, and see what happens with this next second setup. charge timeout of the half. Little game of cat and mouse, always, always fast. There's a reason too. I'm an assistant coach because I'm I, I, I can't do that. <laughs> my, my brain don't operate that way. I got the five guys yeah. in the middle. I know what they do. Yep. The rest of that, that, that's for somebody else. Somebody that gets paid much, much more than I do. Well, if you've got friends and family across the state, the country, or maybe even the world, they can watch the NSAA High School Championships on Nebraska Public Media Sports. Just download the free Nebraska Public Media app. Watch your favorite high school team. Get the app at nebraskapublicmedia.org slash apps. Team's back out there now. Fourth down and three. 228 to go. And you see what's on the line for Hitchcock County. You gotta love these moments. Your destiny is in your hands, and it is three yards away. First spread look here for the Falcons. Gaston will take it, keep it himself. Gaston pushes forward and a first down for the Falcons. Good call there by Coach Rath and staff to spread that out. Keep your two main playmakers in the backfield. You got a little sprint option look out of this. And, and you can't be right, really. Did fumble there, but I believe his knee was down first. Mr. Side Judge. That is close. <sighs> Didn't see if, if it was recovered. And I didn't either. So by whom as to whether or not that would be reviewed. Here's an interesting thing. Do, do you let him score? They buzz that thing. So here's an interesting scenario. Okay. Let him score so you can get it back. Huh? Yeah, but down four already. Yeah. He's talking about maybe a clock didn't start. Yeah, you see that Randall Rath is all the way out near the hash. Now he comes back, but he wants to believe he's asking about the clock. Mm -hmm. and the officiating crew very interested in what he has to say, clearly. Yeah, that's always a tough one. That uh, those happen at times. Yep. For many a coach yell at, a, at the box, which the box cannot hear you. To start the clock or stop the clock right. or, or something. Right. <laughs> Give them a hand signal. Maybe tell them they're number one. <laughs> if they could stop that. <laughs> Great. Two oh nine to go. From the four yard line. Gaston keeps it, leans forward. Gaston near the Goal line and just short. Was it out? No, they're going to say he was down. The whistle blew. Aiden Meyer was in there digging at it. He was had the ball and was headed down the field. We'll see a good look at it here from our awesome time camera out. crew. Owls dodge. Second charge timeout. Very close. Very close. Do have a need now. Another angle might have been the best. There. It was difficult to see the ball was moving. Yeah. That knee comes down late. It does. No knee down. Still not. Still has the ball. Still not. Not down. Ball moving it out oh, there. That might away. See if they take a look at this one if it becomes an official review. I 
excellent work by the camera yeah. guys. Just that is an right. awesome shot. Well done, ladies and gentlemen. And they will. Nope, they nope. don't. Ooh. Second down and goal. Gaston. Stop. Keeps digging, but nothing there. And another timeout called yeah. by Mike Spears. So there's the last timeout for the Jaguars. <laughs> timeout. Howells Dodge. Third charge timeout. Bring up third and one again. LP, we are at fourth yeah. and one. How about that, huh? <laughs> or third and one, sorry. Third and one on the goal. We've had a game we both probably thought was going to be <laughs> 80, 80 to 79. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Two more downs. Two more 30. Get it back with. Well, we wonder maybe, if, yeah, if they should take that. Here's the, here's the protocol Order. for the instant replay. So the uh, the review is always operated under the assumption that it's correct on the field, and you have to see indisputable indisputable video evidence. And there are the automatic replays. And that was a possible turnover. Well, Maybe they thought the whistle had blown. I don't know, that's a good point. So here we go, third down and a goal to go. Keenan Gaston under center. Gaston spins near the end zone, right at the end zone, did not get in. Boy, he fought off the first wave, thought maybe he'd get on the second. But Howells Dodge stands tall right at the goal line. State championship now on the line right here. Jackson Unrein, I believe seven is in there. And that was, if it goes Howells Dodge way, that, that is a play that will live in infamy, as they say. So here we go. Fourth down, goal, ball at the six-inch line. We have any kind of ball fake and boot. It's a touchdown. The toss wide. Near the goal line. In touchdown, Falcons! What a drive by Hitchcock County. Drew Scott here on the toss. Pure grit and determination. Just Nudges the ball. Clipped the line. Over what the front a of the end line. Another look. Oh, what wow, an effort. Wow, what a play. What an effort. Previous play is under review. And the only. I don't know what they would be checking here. The only thing would be if his, his foot was out of bounds or his knee was down. More cross arm mom stance from the stands. <laughs> the replay guy, just get ready. <laughs> if this goes the other way, you're going to get some angry phone calls and emails. <laughs> and we I, I thought he was in. Yeah, he yeah. did yep. not. I mean, we didn't see a hip down, a knee what down, an ankle down. At the last minute, that ball just clipped the yellow. It did. This is, this is going to be the angle. Right. Oh, no. There's no way. Though. Not out. Not down. There's a knee. But right there is yeah. over. Yeah, touchdown. Yep. Yep. I'll give it to the crew. You know, yep. buzz it down. Do your due diligence. Make make sure you're right. It's a huge moment for both teams involved. Yeah, absolutely. And you got the chance. You have to do it. Well, Cindelar just didn't have enough enough lead there. Boy, he's giving it all he's that got much though. Yeah, right there. Good knowledge too to just extend the ball. <sighs> that is a play, Drew Scott. That is a play. There you go. There's your moment. Touchdown to seal off a state championship. I've been on both sides of these reviews. I had the opportunity to coach in a state championship game where where they did not have review. Yeah. And so then the opponent <laughs> but dis voiced their displeasure. So the next year we had a review, and then it overturned the call. 
and they were not happy with that either. After further review, the ruling on the field of a touchdown is confirmed. State championship moment for the Falcons. What a play on fourth down, huh? It was. I mean, you've got some options to get wide on that. Was something like I said, I would you could fake the handoff and toss and then boot the quarterback out. Gaston will keep it himself and he'll be stopped short, but still a 10 point lead for Hitchcock County. Two score lead with 58 seconds to go. It'll be a long haul for the Jaguars to try to keep that 25 game win streak alive. The third phase of this game though right the yep. third phase if we take a look at another look at the touchdown and the great effort here by Drew Scott the third phase of this game right you have had the opportunity to return the kick yet in the game they've all gone in the end zone I'm not guessing he's going to but if Keen gas gets a little jazzed up and gives you an opportunity to return it that return for touchdown yes. is a big thing. You, yep. you have to get on blocks. You have to do it. I wouldn't be surprised maybe if they tumble this down the field just to, to create some chaos out of it. Or you trust your dude and just say, hey, this is what it is. 20 though. Colin gas. Sorry. Colin is kicking this. Yep. So 58 seconds to go. 22 12. Hitchcock County with the lead here in the fourth. Colin Gaston to kick it away. Brester and Bellina are deep. Steady she goes. Put her in the end zone. <laughs> Make it drive the field. Yep. Well, not a situation. Howells Dodge has been in a bunch. Going to be forced to move the ball down the field. Probably airing it out. We'll see what what the Jaguars can come up with. Sindelar under center. Drop back to pass over the middle. Incomplete intended for the tight end, Aiden Meyer. Sindelar moved out, or, or Sindelar ha had an opportunity actually to, to get the ball to Brester. Hitchcock County's playing real loose coverage. Got two guys yep. back, you know, taking care of him. But the pass is there to complete. Maybe you get a bunch of yards after the catch. Back to throw again is Sindelar to pressure the screen. Good hustle. Move quickly here as the clock will continue to run. Inside 35 seconds now. Great hustle by all the defensive line there. That, that's how screens have problems to fly back down the field. Third down. Works it out there. Oh, yeah. And a flag. It's got there a little early. Yep. Just a little bit early. Mason Schilke saw the route, saw the diagnosis, knew he was going to be able to go make a play. Maybe for sure seal this thing. Just a little anxious on the on the deflection. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty. Result of that is 15 is first down. So that will take the ball out to near midfield. 37-yard line. Nailed it. Score's got to happen pretty quick for Al yes. Dodge to have, have any chance of it. 
Got it. Oh. Incomplete. Rester's slow to get up. Great more frustration than I think he, he, he wanted to get up and high point that ball and make the catch. He's the type of kid you know feels it hit him in the hands. Mm. Should have caught it. <laughs> ball got off two face masks there. What a play. That's Gaston. Colin Gaston knocking it loose. 12 seconds to go. Third and 10. This has a chance to be caught a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> right. Shooter's there. Shooter's there to tackle. We ain't there for interception. We're here to hit people. <laughs> oh, I kid. I kid. I'm sure he's got fantastic hands. away and for the first time in Hitchcock County history the Falcons are state champs congratulations to Hitchcock County fantastic gritty effort today played their played their tails off Hard-hitting game, fundamentally sound game. Definitely something I don't think anybody that, that at the beginning of the day thought that ended up 22 to 12. We were expecting a lot, a wow. lot of points, but credit to Coach Rath. Keep those practices locked down. I will never bother you again to come out and watch that. <laughs> Congratulations to Hitchcock County on a state championship, their first ever. Well, they did it to start both halves, came out. 31 yard touchdown drive to open the game and then to open the third quarter another touchdown drive and that put him on top for good here's the one that sealed it the stretch at the end and they're taking home the trophy live sports and documentaries are part of the valued services from nebraska public media Fans of high school and college sports have a great way to ensure these programs will continue. Join the Nebraska Public Media Sports Partners Club. This is your home for Husker Volleyball, Big Red Wrap-Up, and high school championships. Log on to nebraskapublicmedia.org slash sportspartners and explore the benefits of joining. With your support, sports action will stay right here all year long. And thank you. Live streaming for the NSAA championships are also available at the Nebraska Public Media website and on the free Nebraska Public Media app. That way the flavors will marry nicely. Doesn't that look good? There's still places to discover. It just absorbs you. Get here fast. That was a new experience. <laughs> We're just getting started. Nebraska Public Media is proud to bring FNX First Nations Experience to its channel lineup. FNX First Nations Experience is the first and only national over-the-air broadcast television network devoted to Native American and World Indigenous content. You can watch FNX First Nations Experience free over the air with an antenna. Viewers may need to rescan their television to receive all five of Nebraska Public Media's television channels over the air. For the FNX program schedule, visit nebraskapublicmedia.org slash schedule. Coverage of the NSAA football championships on Nebraska Public Media is made possible in part by Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest Foundation, Nebraska Public Power District, Nebraska Kubota Dealers, Nebraska Corn Board, Aurora Cooperative, Constellation Energy. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support.
What a finish, and it's a first. Hitchcock County, the Falcons winning a state championship in Class D2. The final 22 to 12. Let's go to Heath Kramer. The Nebraska School Activities Association is honored to have medals and trophies for both of these outstanding teams. Presentations will be made by NSAA Executive Director Jay Beller, NSAA Board of Directors Bob Drews from Arapaho, and Thomas Lee from Omaha Westview. Here are the awards for the runner-up, Owls Dodge High School. Head coach Mike Spears and his assistants will present the silver medals. Players, please come forward as your name is called. Number one, Lane Bellina. Number two, Connor Borick. Number three, Lance Brester. Number four, Aiden Meyer. Number six, Britton Sindelar. Number seven, Colton Clausen. Number eight, Kellen Fiala. Number 10, Rylan Nelson. Number 12, Carson Hurd. Number 14, Preston Jensen. Number 15, Landon Dobbins. Number 17, Noah Sofol. Number 20, Dane Meyer. Number 21, Caleb Perrin. Number 22, Hunter Luther. Number 23, Grant Perrin. Number 24, Oscar Dominguez. Number 25, Dylan Rikacek. Number 26, Cooper Krekemeyer. Number 28, Justin Bayer. Number 32, Cash Reds. Number 35, Ethan Sofal. Number 44, Matt Brester. Number 45, Ethan Krusha. Number 50, Nathan Tomshock. Number 55, Connor Krekemeyer. Number 56, Melvin Delgado. Number 60, Alex Bayer. Number 64, Nathan Hegeman. Number 74, Cole Grovajan. Number 84, Andre Martin. And number 93, Andy Dominguez. For these outstanding athletes and their school, here is the 2022 NSAA Class D2 State Football Runner-Up Trophy. Congratulations, Howells Dodge High School. So state runner up for Howells Dodge. They finished the year at 12 and one, a terrific run and great season for Mike Spears and his Jaguars squad. Winning the D1 title last year. And back here in the state championship once again. Now time for medals and trophies for the champs from Hitchcock County. Back to Heath we go. Now to the champions, Hitchcock County High School. Head coach Randall Rath 
we have a special award for you. Coach Rath and his assistants will present the gold medals. Players, please come forward as your name is called. Number one, Adam Kisker. Number two, David Beasley. Number three, Dalton Hagen. Number four, Drew Scott. Number five, Carson Schuler. Number seven, Jackson Unrein. Number nine, Keenan Gaston. Number 10, Gavin Losey. Number 12, Jack Baker. Number 13, Mason Schilke. Number 15, Ashton Parker Johnson. Number 20, Colin Gaston. Number 21, Connor Letta. Number 22, Nathan Colmorgan. Number 23, Wade Wagner. Number 24, Darren Nieben. Number 25, Jarrett Nieben. Number 27, Keegan Schuler. Number 31, Trent Kisker. Number 33, Jace Hoxwell. Number 35, Jacob Wagner. Number 40, Dylan Colmorgan. Number 42, Samuel Hare. Number 44, Carson Hubble. Number 66, Taylor Hubble. Number 80, Brendan Hedrick. Number 82, Tanner O'Brien. Number 88, Brandon Melchert. And number 99, Jaden Loffrey. Presenting the championship game ball from Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is Vice President of Underwriting, Janda Louie. Now, for these outstanding athletes and their school, here is the 2022 NSAA Class D2 State Football Championship Trophy. Congratulations, Hitchcock County High School. It's a first, Hitchcock County, the state champs. They finished the year 13-0, and and what a finish and what a drive there late in the game to seal the title for the Falcons. It was. Can you embrace those championship yeah. moments? They how did. How about Keenan Gaston today? Just a, I mean, just patient, poised, taking what the defense gives him, runs the ball tough, had a good day, and just won a state championship. I mean, nothing more you could want. 25 carries, 99 yards, a touchdown, a long of 17. Had that big 45-yard completion for a touchdown. Let's go down to the field to Doug Duda. 
Howells Dodge had the tradition in Hitchcock County just started some. The five people that are left in Trenton are still running up and down the uh, main street celebrating just like they are here. Coach Ratha, man, congratulations. You know you beat one of the great programs in state history. And as you said, uh, you just got to find somebody in the finals and take care of business. Did you play better in the second half? We played a lot better. I thought uh, our kids really adjusted well defensively. Uh, our DNs just played extremely, uh, you know, better technique-wise, and we didn't allow them. We wanted to take away their toss play. We knew coming in, that's what they like to do, and I thought our DNs really, really did a great job. Talk about settling the nerves by having a great start to each half and scoring on your first possession of each half. That was huge, and you know these kids, they were they were ready. Uh, they they self prepare a lot through scouting reports and and uh, through watching film. They've just done this all year, and I, I just uh, uh, take my hat off to how hard they study the game as well as just being great kids. These times are always emotional, but I have to ask you. How does this feel the last two years? You had the great news with your daughter last year after a loss. These kids come together, and you have a whole probably different kind of feeling here today, uh, riding home with the state championship trophy. That's awesome. I'm just so happy for these guys, you know, and, and our daughter, you know. We've, I've, I've been able to put things in perspective a lot more through a lot of the challenges my family's face with some adversity and uh, you know, I, I, these kids, uh, they, they've been my family, and, and it's been real tight, and I love them. I love them. Keep it going, Coach. Congratulations on the first state championship for Hitchcock County. Thank you very much. Let's talk to the boys. They've got the uh, football. They've got the trophy. They're ready to get going here and uh, enjoy a state championship. We'll start here with Keenan Gaston. A lot of this was about defense, but you got the job done offensively. What's going through your mind on that touchdown pass to start the second half? On that touchdown pass, the first thing I thought when it left my fingers was, uh-oh, I think I just threw an interception. But Trent was able to bring it in, and we got a touchdown off of that. You guys were able to win this game with defense where most of the year it's offense, even though you pitched all those shutouts. What was different about today than uh, the rest of the playoffs for you? Uh, they, For defense, uh, they had a really good blockers up front, and it was hard to wrap up that number three back and uh, just take them to the ground on the, with on one and one. All right, congratulations. We'll talk to your teammate here in uh, Keegan Schuler. Ten tackles, 99 yards, uh, rushing 45 through the air. You leading the way with 12 tackles here today. How physical was it out there? Oh, it was it was pretty physical, sir. Um, it was just hard to hitters, and we just we just came back and hit even harder, I guess. How exciting is this for you and your teammates? You'll always be remembered as the first ones to get this done at Hitchcock County. Oh, it's awesome. We've been dreaming of this since we were second graders. That's all we ever talked about. So what was it? I kind of asked Coach a little bit about it. What was it from the time that you guys got beat in the semifinals to where you are today? Uh, he talked about just getting a weight room in when he came as a coach. What were some of the other things that made this team better this year? Worked on our speed. Worked on our speed. We worked on communicating well, and that's about it. And just keep being stronger, I guess. Go take that picture that's going to last a lifetime. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. That is Hitchcock County getting a chance to talk with Randall Rath, Keenan Gaston, and Keegan Schuler, your 2022 D2 state football champions. They may have only got to play two home games in the regular season. They had more on the road. They had more at home during the playoffs, but they sure knew how to handle it. And here they are with the gold medals, guys. Thanks very much, Doug. Appreciate it. Football player right there, Keenan Gaston. Huh? <laughs> he, uh, he's like, yeah, man, I'll do this interview, but I'm, right. I'm here. Is there another game? Because I will play in it. That's right. <laughs> Ready to go. Can we win too? Yeah. Can I go? We'll play the next one too. What a <laughs> terrific performance. What do you What do you think? You You think uh, Frank's pool hall tonight? You, oh, huh? buddy. Gonna be that, something there. That is gonna be a joyous four and a half hour ride home, <laughs> and, and that that might last a week or two. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, that's that's terrific. Congratulations to all of Hitchcock County and the Falcons taking home that state championship trophy. What a terrific moment for that entire community. Well, you got a first state champ. It's Hitchcock County. They knock off Howells Dodge 22-12. A lot yet to come over the next day and a half. D1 is coming up next at 2.30 this afternoon. That's Clarkson Lee and Neely Oakdale. Then tonight, the Class A final, a rematch between Gretna and Omaha Westside. We'll be back here tomorrow morning for C2. C1 in the afternoon, and we'll wrap it up tomorrow night in B. Once again, our final 22-12, Hitchcock County with their first ever 
state championship for Matt Verzal, for Doug Duda, and the entire sports production crew. I'm Larry Putney saying goodbye until this afternoon from Memorial Stadium here in Lincoln.